fucking it's it's raining like it's raining hard as fuck over here. Like it's like I don't know. Yeah, the Niners game. Yeah, it's crazy yeah. watching a game in the Bay Area. It's like oh, it's like happening where all my friends and family are. But you don't even, you know, that's the only place you can see football in the Bay now, right? It's crazy. It's except for college. But true. Sad yeah. but true. Yeah. yeah. The um, but it's it's too bad because you know the whole time you know watching football this weekend and um, but I was thinking like holy shit, like we might not um have any more football uh like forever because you know despite the people trying to take it away with fake things like CTE and other things like that, um, disease X is on its way. You heard about disease X? <laughs> They don't even try anymore. They're like, yeah, it's uh, X. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I've heard about this. Yeah. It's well, I figured now the reason it's called Disease X is because they know the only people that actually run to like go get boosters are like Reddit Marvel people. So yeah, you figure like Disease X. You're just you're playing the hits at that point. You're it's it's tar- it's legit a niche good market. Yeah, it's it's good targeted advertising for them. It's like but- the fifth sequel in a series that only the super fans. Right. Shorts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah. Uh, From the five to the six, we be in the mix with that rare candy paint job on a whip. I need food for the kids, money for the rent. Fuck a lockdown, baby. I can't do that shit. And I don't never vote. Cause I'm fucking broke. And either way, I know the police ain't gonna leave me alone. On a plane by the visit Glen Rock. Me crypto told me I should bring the Glock with me. So I packed up my piece and I'm sliding. Slide. Cause we might get caught up in a riot. Middle finger Trump, middle finger Biden. Fuck a left, fuck a right, is you riding? Do you love to see it? Dudes rocking. Ain't no politics, baby, we just talking. From the birds to the bricks, we be in the mix. With that rare candy paint job on the whip, who you with? But, I, so this is this is a crazy dynamic. So I'm reading this in the timesofindia.indiatimes.com. Um, yeah, I don't know, there's no joke there, but I guess that they when they're not you know trying to get to the moon they're covering diseases and yeah. the guy from the world health organization uh tedros J- jabrasius i have no yeah. idea how you say his last name but like his name sounds like the disease <laughs> yeah it's like a latin name it's like yeah a- his name tedros. sounds like the disease and the disease is called disease x is he the the guy like the greek guy but he looks like he's a mexican dude Right, Tedros. he looks like yeah. he literally looks like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, like okay. if you look at him, like if you look at him, he looks like Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tedros. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just funny because it's like you know it was the same Westworld mold that they made them out of. But they're like, <laughs> like okay, we accidentally made two. I told you not to press duplicate on yeah. the but on the button, but that's okay. We have utility for this. We have use for these guys. And yeah. uh, one goes to the Who, and the other guy goes to Netflix or the fuck. I don't know. He just basically just says Carl Sagan yeah. nonsense on the thing. But this guy was saying <laughs> um, uh, Tedros went out, and, and this was. Uh, yesterday uh, that was reported but i i've been seeing this floated for a while uh tedros says that uh disease x is going to become our new common enemy the country's divided guys the world's divided however we will have one common enemy it's called disease x which <laughs> twitter can't switch to x and then you can't have disease x six months later <laughs> yeah no, that, that well, i was gonna bring that up that uh, yeah it's there's there's definitely an element of you know, associating Elon's thing with a novel disease. What if that is the disease? They're like, it's actually Twitter yeah. is the disease. You know, it's it's bad <laughs> now. I love people. Conf- I remember that when Twitter got it. Obviously, it still sucks, but it got marginally cooler a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. yeah less sure. censorship, a little bit less, you know, and then people were complaining. Remember the people that were mad about that? <laughs> I know. Yeah. They're, 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 no, they, they still do. Like, like I saw one. Yeah. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> I saw one comment like the, the stuff people screenshot is like and they're like, oh, my God, like Elon, we have to do something, you know, like we can't just have everything fly. And I just laugh yeah. at that. So I saw this like Republican guy, Tim Scott, got married or is like got engaged to some white girl. And he looks like uh, Tim Scott looks like I I don't know. I guess I don't know exactly. I can't put it there, but he just looks like a very like cookie cutter, like politician black guy. Okay. And um, and he was married is like proposing on a beach to his uh to his uh to his wife now he's a trump supporter tim sky he's like he just endorsed trump and everything and uh but (laughs) he's just like i got my you know my lady like you know we're together forever this is you know first of many years i can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you and one guy just goes hard r right underneath it (laughs) 
<laughs> and this guy who's like a libtard, which is funny because I'm like, dude, like he's going after the guy you yeah. hate. So you might as well just like let that one fly, you know, like like there could be trouble you know, to the to the libtards um view it should be like well there's trouble in paradise they can't agree on you know their republican black guy politician they don't like that he's race mixing they're not united together but no he's like no we need to censor that off the internet i'm just like dude it, it's the it's the weirdest thing it's the weirdest thing i don't know dude it's crazy the I, I mean, yeah it's a whole clusterfuck there's a lot of layers going on there yeah. it's like a black republican guy yeah so that's like for the for yeah it's there's like a lot of like oh what, what how am i supposed to feel about this you know on this situation I had a call recently with this is out of the blue where Serena put me in touch with this lady uh, who was really nice, but wanted, but, but she was kind of, I won't divulge too much about this, but uh, she was kind of was saw some of my earlier IRL work and stuff like that. And she wanted to talk about like climate change and stuff like that has no idea we do any of this or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, and it's focused on like the academia world and stuff like that. And Serena was like, LOL, you can talk to her if you want. Like, you know, is it, I, I don't know. You, I know you don't like believe in like the climate change thing as much as she does, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I was like, Let, let's just let it rip. You know, I just want to, we were snowed in here. I had nothing to do. I was like, I want to see what this is about, you know. And I, you know, I wasn't going to like Crichton Pillar or anything like that. And I was just, uh -huh. and uh, so I was talking to her and, and it was clear. I just pretend, I just like played dumb. It was clear that, uh, it was just not like an ideological match, you know, but, mm -hmm. but she was super nice and we, we got along and everything. And, um, um, and she wanted to talk to me about some certain stuff. She was like reached out to Serena cause she, through me, but you know, and or wanted to, but then she, and she, I mean, get this, she was in the diversity equity and inclusion space before this. So I'm just like, kind of Tight. crying on the phone. Like, it's just like, I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of like mm -hmm. this podcast and everything. Yeah. And, uh, and then she starts talking about um, Claudine Gay, the Harvard thing. Sure. And I'm doing the I'm doing the J. David Osborne, the Socratic. No, no, what happened there? You know, tell me yeah, about that. I haven't heard this. And yeah. yeah, I haven't heard about it. And she's like, Oh yeah, you know, they 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 ran her out of town, blah, blah, blah. And then these people, they're calling her, and then she drops straight a hard R, like says the actual word, <laughs> dude. Like they're cornered. We're going to get you right back to the episode, but I just wanted to let you guys know of a few other things we offer at Rare Candy Industries. We have a Substack with free and paid subscription options. Free subscribers get access to all written content. That includes Bob's Red Pill. That's the best thing going on the internet right now. Trust me. Paid subscribers get full access to our premium episode feed. And that's just every episode we don't necessarily want to share with the general public, if you know what I'm saying. Again, that's rarecandy.substack.com. We also have merch. That link's a little long for me to say right now, but go to the description, go to our merch store, and find a shirt that's right for you. We have Rare Candy shirts, Dr. Bronner soap label shirts, Rishi mushroom shirts, all types of stuff there. Check it out. There's got to be something for you. And lastly, check us out on social media. On Instagram, we're Rare Candy Pod, but on Twitter, we're at Rare Candy Pod 1. All right, enough of that. Let's get you back into the episode. You know, and I'm just yeah. like, 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 like the English yeah. teacher in high school that says it to like try and right, like right, get it out yeah. of the way, like we talked mm -hmm. about. And I was, dude, they love doing that. The old, the old white ladies love. They, saying, they don't care. They, they love it, dude. They fucking love. I had a lady. Hard, I had a lady at my at my work. <laughs> now she was like a lady who's like drank like two a good day. She was not in the academic space. Okay. She was in quite. Yeah. She was in quite another space um yeah. <laughs> probably the yeah prob oh, probably probably yeah. the circle k space like hanging out outside yeah, yeah. the circle k or something and uh she circle she, k, she was trying to tell me one time and she was like yelling it really loud and i i feel like i was the libtard in this situation she goes she's like yeah and like she's talking about a guy at our work that was really annoying <laughs> and he was and he was this is, I was not expecting this word because it doesn't apply to him. No. Uh, and uh, she goes, she goes, and that guy, he's a total, you know, like, and I'm like, what? And it's like a white guy. And I was yeah. like, and she's white. And I was yeah. like, what? She goes, no, look it up in the dictionary. She's like, it actually means somebody who doesn't fit in in society, like somebody who's just too stupid for society, ignorant <laughs> and dumb. On, and she's like, that's where that that's where the prefix comes from. And I and then and I and like it, you're, and it's like I.G. I don't know. She, like she was like saying it was all that stuff. I'm like, 
But the thing is, I'm like, we're in, we're in like East Palo Alto right now. Can you not? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, and uh, Devontae yeah. Adams' hometown. Just yeah, like, I know. Like, yeah. I know. I, I was just, Dude, like, I, she was, she, she was doing this thing, like the whole, like, actually, the real definition of this. I'm like, yeah, I don't like, know that. I don't know that that's gonna play. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like Bernie Sanders with uh, niggardly. He like used that word way too much yeah. in the 70s. And like every one of his essays, he used it. <laughs> I was like, damn, yeah. dude, like you got a thesaurus. Or, or, uh, or, 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 the, or uh, like you read some literature like sniggering. You know what I mean? Yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, is, that one hits hard. That one hits hard because you could tell like the author's like, fuck it. You know, like, dude, it's go. funny. Yeah. I read like last year or the year before when we were rereading Harry Potter, especially the first two or three, mm-hmm. dude tons of sniggering dude and it was like yeah. there's like 70 times and it's literally n-i-g-g-e-r in the yeah. harry potter it's like in there but i it reminds me of my favorite little beeline where he's like bust a ass n-word and he says like like a rapper would and then he says use a n-word and he like <laughs> says it like says n-word like it's an insult <laughs> yeah guy, like spells it yeah it's like dude i fucking and love it, it. Anyways, Disease X, which sounds yeah. like a guy in jail after 10 years switching his name. Disease, yeah. my name is Disease X. <laughs> and um the <laughs> then you know, yeah. uh, just maybe perhaps. But uh what is it? Let's say what is it? Because they do bullet mm-hmm. points now. All articles are bullet points now. Um Disease X is a placeholder name. Great. That was adopted by the WHO in 2018 on their short list of blueprint priority diseases to represent a hypothetical unknown pathogen that could cause a future epidemic. Damn, I wonder how he, they, wonder what they were doing with disease X in, 20, huh? in 2018. I wonder what was yeah. happening. Wonder was why they would already. They, have, they proved yeah. it was COVID was circulating by then, right? Interesting. I know, yeah, I know. Interesting. It sounds like one of those authors yeah. were like that, or like a musician where they're just like where like they'll have a new hit record and like they'll be kind of like annoyed about it at radio interviews. They'll be like, mm-hmm. "Well, I, that you know, to be honest, that song's like two years old now. Like, I don't even like I'm onto like this new thing now. So if yeah. we could talk about that, that's kind of I feel like now what what these people do. But uh, yeah. the the who adopted the placeholder name to ensure that their planning was sufficiently flexible to adapt to an unknown pathogen e.g broader vaccines and manufacturing facilities so you gotta it's just you guys if you guys are pilled on the whole 2020 situation like this shouldn't come as a shock to you but it's just funny that they like write articles that say this and people like are like no you what are you talking about like what do you like what do you mean you director of the u.s national institute of allergy and infectious diseases Anthony Fauci. Anthony Fauci. Yeah, if you guys have heard of him, Anthony Fauci said that the concept of disease X would encourage WHO projects to focus their research efforts on the entire classes of viruses, e.g., flaviviruses, uh, instead of instead of just individual strains, e.g., the Zika virus. There's a name. Uh, I haven't heard that one in years. <laughs> Thus, Zika. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Zika, Zeke. Zeke? Oh yeah, 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 yeah Zeke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thus improving who capability to respond to unforeseen strains the world health organization in 2022 assembled 300 scientists to scrutinize 25 virus families and bacteria blah 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 all this nonsense all this stuff they found it they found it guys they found it in 2018 how will disease x emerge disease x is anticipated to manifest oh sick they're gonna do it uh with the monroe institute and yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, look, can can I hate yeah. at that point? I don't know. Uh, can yeah. I actually oppose that? I'm not sure. Uh, disease X is anticipated <laughs> to manifest as a respiratory virus. You don't say, Doctor Amesh. Ad- Come on. All right. Uh, <laughs> a, a senior scholar at the John Hopkins Center for Health Security told CBS News. Okay, the India Times. I saw the doctor that they sought out. I see. He's they're like, oh, hey. Amesh, yeah. I'm from the Indian Times. Would you care to comment? And they're like, why don't you ask that guy? No. Nope. Game recognized game, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah. Why don't you ask that guy over there? Nope. I don't talk yeah. to you, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's possible that this virus yeah. is already present within animal populations. Wow. Amazing. That sounds like something else, but has yeah. not yet made the leap to human hosts. That could be bats. It could be birds. Could be some other type of animal species. Swine, for example. Um, so then they get into all this stuff. It's antimicro. All, uh, oh, but then also, here's another reason why it exists. Climate change. Yeah. This is the long-term change in the Earth's climate due to natural or human factors. 
fuck okay yeah. those aren't different at all yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> could be either yeah. one yeah uh but it's funny we'll, the we'll hedging say. the hedging is yeah. out of control I, now dude it's I crazy know. dude yeah it's like, yeah we're, we're not sure which but yeah. it doesn't really matter it's the same or, thing. yeah exactly yeah, yeah exactly yeah, it's the same thing no it's yeah. all just kind of boring argument stuff if it's natural or human uh one you know either way we should roll out draconian laws and make life worse for everybody yeah. if it's natural um climate change can affect the distribution and transmission of diseases such as vector-borne diseases like malaria waterborne disease diseases chlora, chlora uh, cholera cholera yeah yeah cholera is it cholera yeah yeah yeah, that's yeah. Right. um uh, typhoid and hepatitis and respiratory diseases yeah uh, so it just i just laugh like um so no that, mention of that, lab leak that that's a possible no but it's but it's like you you put yeah. two and two together they've known about it since 2018 they've reserved yeah. a fucking name for it um yeah. which is like us when we start a series we're like well we haven't done anything yet but here's the name and it's like when you write an essay and you control find the re control replace you replace yeah. all the yeah it's yeah, like yeah. that also yeah. john hopkins event 20 motherfucking one up in this bitch dude like they, yeah it's the ground zero of that mm -hmm. yeah it's and do, do you know what the what the who has been up up to re their recent game is insane it's no. like probably the scariest thing of this whole thing they're they're writing these new measures or something to circumvent any one state government so they basically they're making themselves like in the event of a pandemic in the event of a disease x they have unilateral control to enforce any travel mandates vaccine mandates anything Probably but the, thing, the way they're doing it, yeah, yeah, stuff too. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But the way they're doing it, they're putting it, they're making the bill of this whole thing so boring that no one really gives a shit. But like, if you dig into it, you're like, dude, this is insane. This is clearly the game plan. You filibuster, know, dude. Fil yeah, filibuster. exactly. Yeah, writers mm -hmm. and yeah. So it's like yeah, unelected officials deciding how we live our life. It's the pandemic industrial complex, dude. Shout out Latham, dude, with that bar right there. Yeah, it is. It. yeah, it's the PIC. For sure. Well, but but yeah. guys, if you're if you're really if you're really um mad about this whole thing, as as we all should be, um, what kind of preparations are needed? The gladly this article says to prepare for disease X, the WHO and other stakeholders have proposed the other the pr proposed several strategies, such as strengthening surveillance. <laughs> sure. That's what we need. Yeah. Um, so that way you can tell where the disease is going, contact tracing and everything. Uh, developing and deploying vaccines and treatments. This involves accelerating the research and of the vaccine, of course. And so, yeah. like, this is all just like mumbo jumbo. That, like, to any, I'm, I, I don't want to pick on the boomers, but they think this is all like amazing progress and like yeah. innovation. Like, they just they fall for this stuff. Uh, yeah. Our generation does too, but they like are straight up in agreement like as a yeah yeah they say this involves accelerating the research of the development of safe and effective vaccines and treatments for potential pathogens as well as ensuring their equitable and timely distribution and access so yeah. we won't we can't do the apartheid thing again guys that because that yeah. ruined the world uh with yeah. greedy greedy capitalism um mm -hmm. is, is, is what we did um enhancing public health measures this involves implementing and enforcing measures to prevent and control the spread of diseases such as hygiene Indian times, um, the I, hygiene, isolation, yeah. quarantine, contact tracing, social distancing, and mask wearing, um, yeah. building resilience and preparedness. Th this involves enhancing the capacity and readiness of individuals, communities, and health systems to cope with and recover from disease outbreaks, such as addressing the social, economic, and environmental factors. Um, nowhere there are they like, hey, eat a fucking apple. Yeah. Like go yeah. for a walk. Like get some yeah. vitamin D. Like the sun might help you a little My bit. My line, if I wrote that article, it'd just be bullet point, Rishi, done. You know? Yeah. yeah shout out India, dude. dude. I love India and all all that shit, but there's there's some nasty ass place, dude. Let's be real, dude. The dude, cities, every travel on, video, every travel video yeah. is just like, damn, bro. <laughs> like I I thought this shit would slap. It does. Yeah. It certainly does not. And it's and, probably like a lot of places where you got it. There's some cutty ass spots you got to yeah. get to where before it gets cool but any city part like i feel like india is probably like new york city but just 10 times nastier which is saying something you know yeah because it's just yeah feces in the streets and everything like that yeah. exactly but wear a mask though that's the thing you just gotta wear a mask and you'll be good yeah. um well it's exactly. funny in spite of that india was treating 
COVID with ivermectin and had like no deaths for like a year, straight, you know, in some states of India. It's like, yeah, you know, I remember like, they did the whole hilarious. thing where they were building like uh, yeah. pyres for like the, the, yeah. the funeral, the funeral the, the, yeah. like funeral things. They were like getting ready for like burning bodies and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, great. But Doors, then, yeah, of course, Morrison, dude. yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So it's just, it's just, uh, it's just ridiculous. But um, a couple things before we get to, uh, we got some voicemails today, but I want to get to some announcements um we started a thing um now shout out to everyone that does subscribe to our sub stack i think most people if not all that uh have stayed with us have, have known noticed that it's worth it you get your bang for your buck uh you get a bonus episode every week whether that's gain of fiction coast to coast whatever anything like that you um even just you and i just riffing and stuff it's 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 uh it's a very cool like extra ecosystem that we've uh, that uh -huh. we've made over there and it is it's different i feel like it's just a little different and um but uh we are giving a, a free trial we found out we could do that um the podcast uh -huh. is only a month away from being around for four years um so the free trial is going to extend through that month uh march 31st so all you do is if you, you subscribe to the sub stack right if you don't if you're not like a free subscriber i don't know what, what the like Okay, correct that now, because regardless of what yeah. I'm saying, even if you have no interest in that, you should be subscribing to the free feed because it's, it's a lot of great writing on there. But um, it's two weeks, two week free trial. You get all our episodes, two weeks to slow the spread, right? Yeah. Where have you heard that before? It's just only going to be two yeah. weeks. Um, two weeks goes by fast. So you will get charged after that two weeks. Now, what you could do, what you could do is do two weeks for free, binge everything that you think sounds good and then cancel it right right on like the 13th day yeah. or whatever but the now, reminder on your iphone like we all do for sports you know like free you, trials you can do yeah. that but you're gay if you yeah. do that and ba your beta i mean i can crunch your numbers right now if i found you did that there's just no way to go alpha after that so i'm just yeah. just keep that in mind if you do that if you do um, that unsub from the free feed we don't want yeah you, know, you can't even read anything like, anymore yeah, yeah exactly but no it's truly yeah. seriously like it's worth it. We've seen people sign up already, but I wanted to make a formal announcement on here. It is, uh, it's excellent. Um, and we're really proud of it. There's over, I think there's like 80 episodes on there right now. Like it's a lot. You, you crazy. I don't even think you like, a, if you do binge all 80 in like two weeks before the free trial is there's a lot going on with you and we need to help you. There's things that we need to like, <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. might learn some cool things, but I'm still concerned that you were, yeah. that. <laughs> um, yeah. we get you a, get you a girl like the Todd Rundgren song. We gotta yeah. get you a girl. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, Trump, Trump is back though. Trump is back. We've been talking about this, but uh, DeSantis dropped out the other day, which I thought was interesting. Um, sure. Not that I, I didn't. I've I'm not shocked. There's a lot of boomer Republicans that are shocked and are shocked, and a lot of boomer libs that are like super shocked about about yeah. Trump. But I, I laugh. The people I, I I find that are not annoying because I think they're coming from a good place, and I am sympathetic to this, and ultimately agree in the long term. But the people who are already telling people just straight up not to vote at all. Which yeah. okay, fine. You're not going to. I, I get it. I, I would understand every single reason not to, not to vote. There's there's a lot that that isn't going to change with your vote. Um, and but a lot of people's reason gets conspiratorial and and in a, in a good way. However, I I have to ask a question. So sort of people who say like I'm not voting for Trump, and there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I, I like him more than Biden. Like Biden sucks. I'm never Biden, but I just I like won't vote. Now, okay, fair. You're right, but. Some people will always go to like Epstein or Israel or just like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's not going to change. And I'm like, well, OK, so I agree that like Trump's part of the Epstein stuff. Trump is pro Israel. Trump is, is whatever. There's, there's a lot of things that aren't going to change if Trump comes, goes in. Now, if you believe that this Epstein thing is pretty much over in terms of like there's nothing you could do to stop that like it's this global thing everybody's implicated and all that stuff doesn't that then not become a factor in your electoral process <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. like i wouldn't go to the booth going thinking about epstein then at that point because i'll be like well no matter what i'm supporting something yeah like yeah that. now some people say well that's why i'm not going to the booth but i i don't know i i do think trump is just better than biden like regardless it's crazy like, regard they're, yeah. it's crazy they're running biden again like I don't like that. Too, I don't that's know. just a that's honestly a flex on their part. They're like, yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's crazy. They're running dude. Biden like, and Silicon Valley. Yeah. 
that's what Biden is made of silicon now. It's yeah. like, that's what, he, yeah, he yeah. is the Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yeah. He's like it's... a hidden valley. He, he thinks it's hidden valley ranch. Yeah. <laughs> he bought that lip balm. That fucking yeah. hidden valley lip balm right. shit. Yeah. He, he's like, he fucking... you can eat it, right? And they're like, yeah, but not the case. Like, yeah. What you... yeah. He eats that, that powder, like the packet, yeah. you know, just like <laughs> just dipping a soft serve. Yeah. His ass will eat the beef jerky silica thing that comes with the beef jerky. The like, one that's like says, do not eat a thousand yeah, times one, on it. Yeah. One that comes in like Vans shoes and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, but, but yeah, like I that's I, I don't show. I don't show. I'm just saying, like, it's weird when people have already said, like, I'm not doing it because of like Epstein. It's like, but all you're doing is telling people to give up at that point. Like, it's weird. It's just this mm-hmm. weird thing. It's like give up, but also like don't do that. Like, don't. How dare you? How dare you ever like go go do that? Like, which I, is I think it is cool? I mean, I decided the last time. I regardless of anyone i'm just i'm never gonna vote again well, and i sure. don't care if people do but i'm i'm just but not. is it because of fucking jeffrey epstein no, that's the thing no. like that like <laughs> that's the weird thing about Jeff. Yeah. like that's like there's all these people it's like well trump's not your savior it's like, i don't i have one savior yeah like i exactly. and i vote and i vote for him every fucking sunday dude yeah exactly yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, but yes you yeah. know yeah. but i no I, I got one savior i uh, yeah. the, the whole like trump is jesus it's like look some people do go hard for trump like uh, yeah. but at the end of the day like no i don't but i think he's better than biden i would rather you could tell me every single thing that trump has done wrong versus everything trump has done uh, as uh, versus everything biden's done wrong i feel still think by the world is in a worse place with joe biden regardless be hilarious if, if trump won again and we had zero wars again for four years and people were still pissed about it like come on dude that's shit's insane that's they would just orchestrate another january 6th i am not like bullish on his like what's gonna happen in his presidency i think he's gonna get even more handcuffed once again like it's gonna be it's gonna be bad um it's gonna it's gonna be bad if he wins again i like i just think it's it's weird like i i I just i found it that it's weird to be like the well that's my biggest fear i'm scared of trump winning again strictly for the the fucking liberal backlash i'm scared of what they're gonna pull out this time it's like but are they chill now are they chill now they're not no they, they, no they, the i'm not saying, of him coming but back also i want it to scary. happen i want to see what it's gonna be too it's, yeah. it's like a it's like a horror film or something it's gonna be nuts dude it's gonna be fucking and it's probably gonna happen too which yeah. is a crazy thing I you know? yeah I don't know I think yeah. they got this I think they got some weird shit planned like that to Dude. really railroad him like I, I don't know yeah yeah disease well yeah that's another thing you could roll yeah. out big time a huge disease X outbreak um mm-hmm. at an Applebee's wow you know like just something yeah so uh NASCAR or uh, Barrel, Sean yeah. Sean Strickland's latest fight you yeah. know where we uh-huh. where where we put it in the fucking nacho dispenser for botulism yeah. and stuff and just gave everybody uh <laughs> disease yeah. acts, uh nachalism yeah, yeah. nachalism yeah, yeah exactly so that's uh, um that's interesting uh camille polly has been pop been uh popping up on on the timeline there's been some really heated debates on there um as somebody who has just watched like YouTube compilations of Palia, and I've I think I've read a couple of like small pieces that she wrote and stuff, but I don't I don't like I've never read any of her like big works like Sexual Persona and uh, um, Glittering Images. I have not uh, uh, read those, but I think it's really funny when when people who are like dissident and and are, are trying to be like or transgressive, whatever any of those words, and they're like they don't like Camille Palia. I'm like how. She's like the architect of all this. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. weird to say that. It's like when it's like those weird metal fans that don't like Black Sabbath. I'm like, what well, how? Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's a weird thing to skip over. Like mm-hmm. um, and most of it is because of her weird, like kind of like uh, in their words, like pederasty stuff that she does, which she's literally like a like a philosophy person that just poses questions, which that's what they do every single time. Yeah that's not yeah. that's not new that's not something that like just she does that's like Foucault all these other people are con- like literally the ultimate debate is like that guy's young now what you know that's, well, that's kind how- of ironic like just posing the question and then they say you know you're it's kind of like you're not supposed to pose that question but that's sort of their whole thing is you're a philosopher and that all you do all day is come up with questions right mm-hmm. and so it's kind of like this non-starter this impasse between the those two groups I feel right she, she's yeah. first off she's yeah. 
every time I turn it on, and I've I've seen like the allegations, like she thinks you should be able to possess child pornography, and like like she's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I'm like okay, cool. Does she go to Capitol Hill and like try to get that into play? No, like she fucking <laughs> talks about it on Charlie Rose and like riffs yeah. with him. Like, well, Charlie, if you have it, I'm trying to figure out how do you do it. Yeah. How, so if you have some. <laughs> Am I throwing you in jail? Like it's, she's yeah. doing like these weird, like Charlie, like defend your position. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. I see that you're so solidified in your beliefs. Please defend your position now. And it's, I mean, and it's not in like the annoying Ben Shapiro way either. And I, I think, I think like first off, all of her age, questionable age stuff, yeah, pretty much comes from the fact that we infantilize people now, which is objectively true. And she called it years and years and years ago. Yeah. Um, she predicted the millennial issues. Yeah. like with the millennial generation and she X saw because she she was an early <clears throat> as a because she's always been an academic and at like at yale and shit too right you know i like mm -hmm. crazy ass places like that um and you know she was like a lesbian at yale in the 60s right so she's she knows what's what what's up mm -hmm. and she saw she's one of those rare ones that saw this stuff happen and she saw this happening early and was brave enough to call it out and be like yo this is gay you know and she's also a woman, which is like, that's like, yo, that's super fucking rare. All those three things in one, you know? So, yeah. um, so yeah. And, but she always had her own thing going on her little column in the paper and stuff mm -hmm. and her books mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah, she noticed it early for sure. Like yeah. Family, yeah. And like, first off the campus rape thing, hundred percent correct on that, all that stuff. Absolutely. Like she was, she was, she really got like, she got torched for that. Like yeah. the, the, all the, like, like, she's like, this is literally fake. Like you're like partying with. You're like knowingly partying with guys older than you and like passing out in their rooms and stuff like that. It's like, what do you like? What is happening? Like, yeah. at what point, do, like, if we're moving forward as feminists, like, you, there is like accountability that you have to have. Like, there That's is. That's the thing. She, she yeah. was like, I thought we were for empowering ourselves. What happened right. to that? You know, it's like, and she, she, it's funny when like the JK Rowling's or the Camila Paglia's, when they're like, yo, we were about that life. What happened? And they, they didn't get the upgrade, you know? And no, they kind of yeah. were like, I love that shit, you know. I yeah, they still it. have Walkmans, dude. They're yeah. like they're not even on the iPod yet. No, which, no, no. Which, yeah. Hey, to, to be fair, like once we started streaming music, it went to shit. And once we started infantilizing people, it really went to shit. And and yeah. like, I'm sorry, I I don't. I think it's very strange and very very convenient to progressivism, which I people can say what we're doing right now isn't real progressivism, but we are quote unquote eroding everything from the past and creating a new future out of it. So assign whatever uh cool academic term you want to that uh what she is saying is basically true now where you see like millennial women and and millennial men uh 30 years old that have voted in almost three elections yeah <laughs> but cannot operate in society and their brain isn't like fully developed until 25 and stuff but we're allowing these people to make huge decisions yeah. And yeah. we don't ever make them accountable. Whereas like our generation, you know, our parents generation and even the one behind that, like, bro, they were like 19, like, you know, just like yeah. having to make real decisions in life. It didn't always go well. But, um, you know, and she comes at it from like a pop culture angle a lot, which I think is really interesting and entertaining. And I just think it's weird if like you're one of those like dissident transgressive people and you're like, oh, I, I don't like Camille Polly because of because she's creepy and weird. It's like, OK, is she a pedophile, though? Because I don't you don't even look up Camille Polly like is she, she should have been like having like those Lydia Tarr situations like every single fucking yeah, week. Exactly. Like you know, it should have been happening all the time if she was this about that life, which she's not. She's yeah. just a philosophy person that makes you that tries to make you uncomfortable by something that you thought was lead pipe cinched. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just that yeah, yeah. that's. That's what I like. And you need those people. And I think as we get, as we keep going into whatever it is we're going, this like new society, globalized society, um, she, she is the nuance. She's not the extreme to me. Like she, she yeah. is the nuance. I think there's people that try to like say, oh, it's nuanced by watering down her take and getting it closer to the shitty one that actually runs our society. Um, that to me is not. I think she is the nuance where she finds that middle, that actual middle ground which is reality, not mm -hmm. not just something that sounds good in college. Yeah, that, that we should apply clearly. to society. Yeah, yeah. So great music takes too. She's yeah. good. She's great good. Music takes. Yeah, I, I like her a lot, and and even her Sopranos one, which everybody jumps on her for. I get it because it was after season one. Season one is an interesting season. It's very good. Mm -hmm. It's very good. And if you know what's coming later, it's excellent. But like that show did not start the way that it finished. Like it was. 
it, she it just became, had to represent for the Italian Americans too. Yeah, that was, exactly. That was yeah, that's all yeah. that was. Yeah. yeah, that's all it is. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's all. That's all it is. So, yeah. um, but yeah, like so, I I think she's I, I think she's a genius, and the fact of the matter is that like if you, the more you get red pilled, and in a natural way where you actually feel like you found the real answer to something, you can like find her name next to it forty years ago. It's great. Yeah, and. Also, just her her aesthetic. It's crazy how she's so turned in interviews and just yep. like bleh, 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 you know, and like oh. is like four thousand miles ahead of the interviewer and like is interviewing herself at, at this point, you know. And but somehow you listen to it, you're not stressed at all. You're just like, oh, this is vibing, no. it's cruising along. Versus like a Ben Shapiro where you're like, okay, where's the Magnum forty five? I need to blow my fucking brain, you know? It's yeah. Like, same kind of cadence, but completely different energies. I feel. And, yeah, he has uh, Shapiro has no swag whatsoever. Yeah, in no. fact, he, he in fact he knows he yeah. like thinks that's cool that to yeah. have to like not. I'm not about. I don't do bells and whistles. I just hand the ball to the ref after the touchdown. You know, like, yeah, he's just yeah, one yeah. of those like one of uh-huh. those guys where you're like, well, Camille Polly is like, no, we're we're gonna get there in an art. Polly is I mean, taking the sharpie I'm out a, of the, the sock, signing the ball, giving it. To yeah, the performing. Yeah. She's performing mm-hmm. while also you know hitting the nail on the head which which not a lot of people can do um it's, not a it's lot of- cool how she understands the essence of gender roles in like a non mm-hmm. gay like non like zoomer trans way you know she kind yeah. of knows she's like this is the core of this shit there's something here you know it's it's mm-hmm. like we do these things for a reason men are men for this reason it's like i like the way and it's funny coming from her because she's basically like an alien you know yeah like who the fuck is she she's like a She's like she doesn't fit in anywhere sexually, at least. And but she's like an expert on that shit. She wrote a whole book on it, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff. So it's pretty funny. It's like it's almost maybe that's probably why it works, you know. That's I think it has. It I think it has to be. I think it has to be somebody like that, somebody like a true yeah. outsider to, exactly. to really be able to comment to that degree. I mean, like, dude, even the audio book of sexual persona is forty hours, dude. Like it's fucking yeah. like it's like she. <laughs> She that's her like she she dumped everything in. It's like nine to like, five Monday through Friday. You'll yeah. be done Friday with that. Yeah, book, you know? it's like, crazy. Yeah. I think it, I think it's free on Spotify. Like I think it's <laughs> free. Tight. Like you you could uh, yeah. smash through that. But and I and I will one day. I will yeah. one day. I'll, I will get through. I'll do the audio. I wish it was her reading it like manically. That would be sick. Maybe we'll do it for uh, the new book series, nonfiction. Sure, series. sure. We'll no, fucking, I yeah, dude. Like that's what yeah. I mean. Where where people just be like this kind of like. Oh, like she brought up like the taboo thing of the age of consent. Like she brought it up. Therefore, we throw everything out. And it's like, man, I'm sorry. Like we are the only, in my opinion, the only country that really um, gets like scarlet letter level Puritan over like even talking about it. Yeah. It's, I, we're the uh, only country. We're, we're, we're stupid about it. We have really weird Victorian nonsense going on in this country um, to even to even decide like, OK, let's leave. I'm fine. Let's leave the age of consent where it's at. I have no problem with that. I have no issue with it being 18. We need to start real. We need to start uh, actually treating 18 like it's adult then. Yeah, exactly. That's my I, thing. Like, we, you need you're an adult when you're 18. Then no, no, yeah. none of this, none of this uh, dawdling around for eight years trying to figure out what you're gonna do. Um, and also, yeah. The, yeah, the whole thing. Like, I agree. I have no issue. I let's keep it as it is. You know, uh-huh. I have no. But is anyone campaigning? Is anyone going to the 16 year old states and campaigning for them to raise it? Is that like a political? I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's some form of that. But, but yes, these people I, that are trashing Polly or whatever should be those political activists on that yeah. route. They should be going to Oklahoma or whatever the fuck these. I don't even know what you know what those states are. It's crazy and great. Yeah, it's like. And then everyone brings up the fr- yeah Europe. The Europe doesn't care, and it's like it seems like less bad things happen out there in general with this shit. It's like a law of attraction thing, you know. If, uh-huh. like, if you focus on it in a weird way, it's gonna produce weird results, kind of thing. So I don't know. It's just, um, yeah. That being said, yeah, philosophers do love talking about age of consent. They do. I mean, it's it's, it's the number it's, one thing. I mean, it's yeah. like it, it's the it's the thing. They know it's weird. They know I. Mm-hmm. They know everybody immediately stops what they're doing to like, oh well, well what are you talking about? You know, yeah. they they know that, and then they get a chance to actually you know defend it because like that's what I mean. If 18's 18, let's make that the let's make that adulthood like truly adulthood yeah. instead of this whole age gap. Uh, you know, and whatever. If, and if yeah. you really are worried about kids making poor choices you need to bolster the educational side but not some dumb like fucking that's the weird that's the other weird thing too is how like you know that 
all those like all the books in elementary schools teaching you how to give like blowjobs and shit. You know that like yeah. You know that that liberals like oh the the conservatives want us to want us want these books banned and it's like well yeah it's fucking insane you know so it's I don't know it's it's all mixed up I um it it's interesting how I do think. I do think we are sexually repressed in a lot of ways as a society. Hundred percent. Um, but in but in the ways that, like the progressive types think they've evolved beyond, but they're they haven't. You know, they that's it's the weird. It's a like a weird catch twenty two thing. The other thing I know, and again, I we were talking about this with the show, um, the uh, the curse that you were talking about in the chat with Kelby mm-hmm. and everyone mm-hmm. on how, and I brought up how like you know it's everyone every Netflix show makes fun of woke stuff now right mm-hmm. yeah. and in particular every show we just watched this new like made for netflix jennifer lawrence movie it was pretty good um oh was that the one where she's like tries to get the kid laid yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, was, it was funny it was fine you know it was a little slow paced and everything but um and but i've noticed this at least five times with like netflix shows or movies where they explicitly make fun of consent now as like some dumb liberal yeah. aggressive thing because but it's like they started it yeah, so it's, it's like from it's coming from within the house. It's like, you know, it's like one of those things. But I do uh, find it funny that that's what they pick, because even those guys, even like the most hardcore Netflix ass progressives know that consent as they've defined it is complete horseshit. Right. When have they ever like, actually when have they ever actually applied it? Exactly. That's what I wonder. Like yeah. like like a like a, a true the, like a true the like, bu- bureaucratic sex person, like yeah. like these people, like these true Terry Gilliam Brazil guy repairman comes in with like forms when you're fucking yeah. and stuff. Like a true when have they applied that? Because like I, for, yeah. that's what dating apps are for, by the way. That's why that's why people that's why people do dating apps or not, or not why yeah. they do them, but that's why they're so streamlined now because it's supposed to take away every form of like kind of the thing that people enjoy yeah. on sexual yeah. encounters. The the the, mystery, uh, the, the, the spont- spontaneity, you know, like yeah. all all these things that it's taken away, and then people wonder why. Hmm, I'm 32 and don't have anybody in my life right now uh yeah. maybe i should have listened to camille Paglia and actually just got gone after what i want in the world rather than fucking um going through all these weird hula hoops uh in and to to live in a yeah. world where eggs are like fucking however much money you know what i mean well, also, like, and, yeah and also um i think girls just realized they were psyoped into this whole thing and they realized quickly that nothing gets them drier than uh beta male asking for consent for a sexual All encounter it is, dude man. it's like yeah. dude it's like there's nothing that'll red pill you faster as a woman i'm sure than that well, experience and right? as a it's guy like, where you think the consent thing works and then and then it's like they're like yeah okay oh i don't want to anymore now and, and then like yeah and then he's like well should i ra- i mean no yeah. it's like, the, the, it's like, no no i know but truly like it's just like yeah like the can i can't it's like I, i'm yeah. just like if you haven't been in the situation this just sounds like somebody who doesn't isn't in the situation it's like when you yeah. when you tell somebody a story from your like your work and you kind of just want them to listen to the story and like go oh that's gay like or Dude, something like but then they, they tell you like what you should have done at your job like you don't fucking work that you have no idea if i you know like what, yeah 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 you know. it's like that when we were doing our um bit on the uh the what's the intimacy coordinator yes thing. And that and I found those TikTok, there's like TikTok or YouTube shorts, because I don't have TikTok, of accounts of, hey, like, I'm an intimacy quarter, and they make those dumb skits. And one of them was yeah. like, when I'm reading a script about, and I put it in that clip of ours, where it's like, when I'm reading a script where they the, the people give, get and give consent, and they're like, oh, this show's going to be popular. It's like, no, it's fucking not, dude. No, no. one wants to hear that in a show, dude. <laughs> like, no one no. wants to. Yeah. No. Speaking of which, I need to watch the new... Um, uh true detective yeah i'm gonna watch that tonight yeah i'm gonna watch that tonight too i haven't seen it but the uh yeah so just you know a few thoughts on palia there i i want to get more into her work but i just laugh when people the the whole thing when somebody drops like the whole child porn pedophilia stuff with her is that that means actually you're supposed to throw all of her stuff out that's that's what people do with that stuff that's that's the that's the algorithmic kind of misinformation society uh that we have now so uh from the five to the six, we be in the mix. With our break and pay job on the wheel. I need food for the kids, money for the rent. Fuck a
you watched a movie that I recommended um, called Two. the called the Fury. Yeah, we watched a couple. That's true. Um, I under, want to talk under, about both for sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 So the, so let's talk about Under the Silver Lake first because. Now, some people might roll their eyes a bit because I did talk about that on gain of, the second Gain of Fiction, which that was a long ass time ago. Uh, the second Gain of Fiction, I paired it with The Crying of Lot 49 um, yeah. and with, yeah. with Adam Lehrer and I uh, talked about where basically, the, you know, The Crying of Lot 49 is centered around a woman who um, is in kind of a really weird, unhappy marriage. And one of her ex like fling guys dies uh, suddenly. Uh, yeah. and, and then she is made the executor of his will and she's, and he's this big, like mogul, like Howard Hughes yeah. ass dude. And so she's like f uncovers all these weird secret societies, basically, uh, um, the red pill journey and the stuff you gain from it and the stuff you lose from it. It's a uh, yeah. crying a lot. 49 is a masterpiece. I, I think everybody should read it, but the under the silver lake is like that, but for a guy that just is trying to get laid Yeah, and, um, it's the millennial Lebowski. Yeah, it's uh, Andrew Garfield, who is like the soyest guy in any other movie. Yeah. But I think he is incredible as uh, um, yeah. I don't even remember what the main character's name. I didn't rewatch it, but uh, the um, in Under the Silver Lake. But he is he is incredible in that. But um, it's a fun like kind of burnout noir journey where it's just like random, like fantastical yeah. things popping out. Um, dream logic, very kind of Kafka-esque dream logic stuff happening in it. But what did you think? I loved it, man. I, mm. I was definitely first 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I was a little skeptical. And yeah. then I was bought in by the end. hundred percent. I the Maharishi, it. the Maharishi cult guy goes hard, yeah. dude. I love that guy. Also. I love the fact. Yeah. hundred percent. I love that. These billionaires are ascending with essentially hookers in their little cave. You know, it's like, they're like only fans girls, you know, and so. they're like escorts. And they're like, these are the girls I'm going to spend eternity with. And, in the afterlife and in this cave that we've carved out under uh under la and mm. uh yeah it was it was fucking great it was yeah he's the perfect character especially mm. the eviction at the end it's like that's just brings it all so down to earth that i like, know oh shit i'm literally kicked out of my fucking apartment because i've been chasing this like this the, crazy yeah. ass story yeah that's the best part about it is every time it kind of yeah. takes you out of the real world yeah it brings you it sobers you up a little bit which i feel like that's like my life a lot that's a lot of like a lot yeah. of people our age in our kind of uh journeys in life uh especially for me being uh a third burnout in his 30s uh like one of my favorite parts is when he's with that younger girl in the uh in that little cave party where he eats the whole cookie when he yeah. shouldn't have eaten the cookie the whole cookie and they're like did you eat that whole fucking cookie dude yeah. <laughs> he's like yeah and then he I just that. did they make him to get in the party though exactly it's yeah like, Kafka thing. I mean, it's, like, it's, it's exactly, yeah. It's like what? Yeah, yeah. it's a Kafka. Thing. Yeah, and, uh, like, I guess, you were supposed it, to eat it. Yeah, it's like, and then you're like, well, the guy at the door. But then who was the guy at the door? Right? I mean, exactly. it's just, there's all these like, was that even the guy? So he's yeah. he's just never belongs. He's not. He's Joseph K. In that sense, he has like a yeah. very Joseph K. Kind of uh, vibe to him. But he, but I love when the REM hits, dude. Like the what's your frequency, Kenneth? Yeah. And like he's the only one that cares about the song. Yeah, and then just like throws up, and and then. uh but then after that, it's like this really odd, like, what is all these weird underground, you know, society, like L.A. kind of indie sleaze parties that they're having. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he wakes up in that graveyard and his like mom is calling him talking yeah. about like sending him videotapes and stuff. It's just yeah. it's um, it's it's really, really, really good. Um, you know, the the guy with the, the eyebrow, I never know his name, the guy with the eyebrows. Uh, he's in so many movies, the creep, the guy with the little that that snuffed it out like the the weird yeah. prize map and and uh oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah about what's happening under la i love uh -huh. that guy too he's great um, yeah mm -hmm. he's, yeah and it's he's... such a it's funny because first of all, i love la movies they're yes. unabashedly la, LA great. <clears throat> and of course it's lebowski but you hear that and you're like well i don't want to watch a lebowski no. remake essentially but the thing is no one ever tries to make a lebowski remake but then, the, but then they kind of did, and they nailed it. They didn't, and well, I know it's not, yeah. not a one-to-one -one map. I, I get that. Well, no, and Lebowski like, is is the big sleep, Raymond Chandler yes, for yeah. burnouts. So there's this, there's a whole lineage mm -hmm. of it, and they're just, they're just like, well, I'm going to make this type of movie. Now that noir genre, it, 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 you know, people think noir is a guy in a detective coat, like yeah. smoking, like this town ain't like it used to be. Toots beat it, you know, like that yeah. type of movie, which those are excellent too. But you. 
really it's a pacing thing. It's a pacing and yeah. an aesthetic thing where a lot of smoke, a lot of confusion. Yeah. Um, you're figuring out everything alongside the pro as the protagonist is. Um, you don't know anything that he doesn't, yeah. and and it's a mystery. And um, you know, and, th and there's a big climactic part of it. For first off, casting wise, you get you get. This is like a Sydney Sweeney's in that. I mean, it's, it's like mm -hmm. this is a lot of like Riley Keough, who was the daughter of Lisa Marie Presley, I think, um, and uh, part of the Presley family. She's the the main kidnapped girl. Um, I love the fake indie rock band with the backwards uh, letters. The songs hits. The songs yeah, hit. they were good. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. No, they were good. And, Jesus uh, getting the shit beat out of him. That was a great part. He's just a little. Little shitting punk, gold, you know, shitting yeah. gold into the toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, no, uh -huh. it's 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 such a fun journey. It did not get good reviews when it came out. It got yeah. a little bit more of a cult following. I think there's going to be another huge resurgence with that movie. It's going to get its kind of. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like a movie that would be like it, like even yeah, like exactly Napoleon. like Lebowski. Yeah, like yeah, the, exactly. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. it bombs it because these movies, like again, like how it ends. Like I can't even tell you how it ends. Like I could, yeah. I you watch it, it makes sense and it's cool. The old bird lady and everything, but like you, if you explained, even pitch that to a producer, they're like, I, what the fuck, dude? I what like why would I fund that? Movie? Well, it has it has that how that hockey stick ending where it just squirrels off into some weird direction, that. which that. again, I think people a lot of people hate. Normies hate. But that's actually the smartest way to end a movie because then you don't get the the bad ending, right? Where it's like, wait, what? You ended it like that, you know? Where it's just kind of, it's like a question mark, trails off a little bit. I love that. I I, I really get mad watching movies with people that only care about plot. Now, plot's important. There has to be a yeah. plot. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, it's like pacing and characters mm -hmm. are much more fun to me where yeah. um, it's kind of like, okay, I don't think you need to be one of those guys. Well, you need to abstract this from there. And then none of this yeah. is actually this. And you don't have to get to that point. But these plot people, they've, when people become so into plot, plot becomes ruined, by the way. I've watched movies with somebody in my family who it will be on their phone during the entire movie. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, oh, I bet this is going to happen. And then it happens. And I'm like, yeah, because that happens in every movie. Like, yeah. you're not yeah. smart <laughs> for knowing that that was going to happen. And that's not... They weren't hiding that from you either. Yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. this wasn't something that you uncovered. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just I, I love like this type of movie, which is just it's zany, it's odd, but it doesn't it doesn't just it doesn't do weird just to be weird. It's yeah. um you know like eventually this guy's trying to find like he's really trying to get laid. That's the thing. Like he's not yeah. really trying to change the world he gets sucked yeah. into a conspiracy but it's all to find this like cute little blonde girl that he was fucking yeah. around with um yeah. and who who's like kind of a 50s like movie girl like that yeah. that uh is obsessed with it all to the point where he gets to the guy's house um i even use this clip to uh to intro the episode of the second gain of fiction again free trial guys free trial mm -hmm. we also cover the trial on the yeah. the, ga the game of fiction, so Get but the, free trial to listen to the, the trial, trial with Monte Carlo. I hope somebody yeah. goes through a trial situation trying to not to trying to cancel it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, your not only did do you your car get charged, it? it got charged for the yearly fee. Yeah. Um, and why did you want to cancel it? Do you yeah. hate them? Thank what you happened? for being a, f a founding member of. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that's crazy because you're actually under arrest now. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, for doing that. Yeah, I mean, didn't mean yeah. yeah, but it's be funny if we like canceling the rare candy trial, like dings your credit score or something. I was sick with that. Be oh, I would it's love like, that. It's yeah. Like, oh, you, yeah, you dipped fifty points. It, uh, yeah. But it, but it does up your Reddit score. Yes, if you cancel. Yeah, so you get Reddit yeah. gold. <laughs> you decide. You get up dudes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the, but no, the, the, but the, yeah. the protagonist, the Andrew Garfield character, he pops into the house where it's the old guy with the comically like old wax face. Yeah. Playing every popular song of all time. And yeah, what the it, fuck, dude? Yeah. And it's just fun. It's, it's kind of a mockery of a red pill journey where like it all lines up too perfectly, like where it's yeah. what people think they're doing. Uh -huh. Um, a lot of times, uh, I do love like cautionary red pill tales a lot. That's what crying of lot 49 is, uh, where it's just like, okay, well now I can't change anything. And I lost all my friends, yeah. you know? And, and I love, uh, no, this guy didn't really have any friends. He had a, like a weird, like girl that would come over and have sex with him every once in a while, but he, yeah. he didn't have a lot of friends. Um, by yeah. the way, in that movie, classic, uh, millennial, uh, uh, thing, millennial frat house thing is, uh, the fucking uh, soda bottle full of cigarettes, yeah. cigarette butts. God, nailed yeah. it.
just nailed it. That. Yeah. It was, it's really, it's really good. So I, I highly recommend if you haven't watched that movie, um, it's from 2018, but a lot of people just haven't, I don't, and I don't know why. Uh-huh. Um, and it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's absolutely great. Now you watched another movie and this one is a little more, uh, that one's pretty RC coded, but this one is like, like pretty much hits everything that we, that we talk yeah. about. And it's, uh, Made by made by a master. Um, this guy's an absolute master filmmaker. His name is Brian De Palma, and this was his 1978 yeah. follow up to Carrie, which was a smash hit blockbuster. Stephen King's Carrie adaptation, um, kind of similar, uh, yeah. and it's uh, called The Fury. Now, The Fury is uh, I've been on kind of a Kirk Douglas, Michael Douglas yeah. kick, so I had been going. I, it was on Max, and I was looking for something to stream. And uh, first off, right away, I talked about it a while back. You look at Kirk Douglas, you're like, holy shit, man. This guy, this is just Michael Douglas. Yeah. This is just Michael Douglas. It's scary, yeah. kind of scary a little bit. Like, it's just, it's like fucking crazy. And um, there, but, but De Palma um, is a gearhead. And the movie starts that way. He He's always been seen as a guy who loved Hitchcock, but like, he's all about the mechanics of filmmaking. So every De Palma movie always has like a scene where you're like, where does this fit into the movie? And then the yeah, guy goes, yeah. and cut. Can I get yeah. some coffee over here, man? Like, yeah. you know, uh, well, fucking bitch. What is this bitch doing? Like his whole another movie blowout, which is another masterpiece by De Palma uh, starring John Travolta, where the whole time the movie starts with like this horror slasher thing. And they're actually just recording women screaming. That's what they're doing the whole time yeah. for the, to put in the post-production. <laughs> like it's just, there's a lot of that happening. So, this movie covers parapsychology, telepathy, um, mass shootings, uh, false flag stuff, a lot of program to kill yeah. kind, of, kind of things happening in there. Um, because it starts out with uh, the Kirk Douglas main character guy. Um, you can tell that he is kind of somebody a little bit because he's on a, on a vacation with his son named Robin. Robin, we'll get to Robin. He's, he's an interesting guy. And... But all of a sudden, a huge shooting happens, mm-hmm. um, and we find out that the guy, uh, the the main CIA agent, played by the great John Casavetes, uh, another great story uh, about him, is uh, orchestrated the whole thing. And that's not a mystery; you see it right away. Um, he even even Kirk Douglas knows this, but you don't know why he orchestrated this uh, because they're filming a mass shooting. And there were like Israel flags everywhere. So I was assuming they were in like somewhere in the Mediterranean. Yeah. And but you don't know why. Like, why would you film somebody shoot doing like a big mass shooting and then like blow up the guy's boat? He must have done something wrong. Mm-hmm. It's actually not. It's actually not true. He didn't do anything wrong. His son has a special talent. And uh, we we then but we don't we don't get to him for a while. Um, but but John Cassavetes for any, you know. Film heads know John Cassavetes. His movies are really cool, slow burn, kind of like these really like dingy, like grungy documentary looking ass movies. Um, one of them is called A Woman Under the Influence, which is definitely how it sounds. It's crazy. And uh, with his wife is like this girl having a meltdown, arguing with his mom. These are all like his real life wife and mom doing this. Um, but he, <laughs> he would take Cassavetes would take acting roles. He's kind of a handsome guy. He would take these acting roles to gain a bunch of money and pump it back into his, his, his passion projects. So yeah. he would do Rosemary's baby. Yeah. Make a bunch of money, which like, yeah, I'm going to do this bullshit movie. Oh wait, it's one of the best movies ever. Yeah. yeah. He, like he, <laughs> he was in that sweet spot where he's like, I'll, I'll take the big blockbuster. That's also a timeless classic. Yeah. Uh, and then um, he has another one called the killing of a Chinese bookie, which slaps really hard too. And heard of that uh, one. yeah, it's, it's sick. It's sick. And, um, but, yeah, he would do Columbo, all types of stuff. But um, Robin, you know, watching his dad die because as he tries to get away um, to find his son, the Kirk Douglas guy, he finds out the, the boat exploded and stuff. But yeah. um, really, the whole concept of the movie is that they were trying to create a footage of a false flag mass shooting because the kid is telepathic, but the kid is also probably has PK, psychokinesis bending yeah. spoons blowing stuff up with your mind and stuff so they wanted to have something that would get him to peak anger yeah like so what would be more angry make you more angry than be than watching your dad die kind of like mk ultra zoolander style um kill yeah. the prime minister of malaysia uh yeah. stuff and there's this like secret kind of x-men school uh involved in it and it's all done really masterfully so what did you think 
Yeah, I thought it was good. Um, it's sometimes it's hard for me to watch like seventies movies. I'm just I need I need that like polish on it, you know. But this one was pretty polished. Definitely had some. Okay, the one thing I mean, this is just right off the bat. This has nothing to do with the theme or anything. But whenever they, whenever they use special effects in seventies uh, movies, like the blood coming out of the fingernails, the audio gets so shrill because they're almost uh-huh. trying to just disguise how bad the effect is. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that's just something that stuck out to me. Where it's always like it's hard to. It doesn't fit a modern soundbar or TV when you're listening to it on a fucking yeah. Well, that's why you get the that's why you get re-releases. You get all the yeah. Blu-ray. You know yeah, that's yeah. why that's why those exist now because you're right. These were not meant to be watched anywhere other than a movie theater yeah. and maybe maybe syndication. But this movie wasn't going to be syndicated on TV. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's crazy. But yeah, I loved it. Um, yeah, Kirk Douglas was definitely the goat, and mm. the girl, the young girl, the seventeen year old girl, high school uh, mm. psychic uh i don't know the actress's name but she no was, me neither i'd never heard yeah. of her mm-hmm. but uh yeah she was great yeah robin is definitely my least favorite character he uh, the actor Maybe. was bad he overacted um just wasn't my favorite uh performance from that but i loved it i love the accuracy of like the the psi elements within there were mm-hmm. clearly what was going because it's yeah what was in the collective consciousness by 78 because it, it couldn't have been more than a decade old since like the summer of love that people were talking about this stuff in mass or whatever. Sure. To, where yeah. they're, Timothy you know, Leary we were talking about like, stuff, you know. yeah, where they're talking about alpha brain waves and like the, the train controlling the train with your mind. Like that's me off the cup of shift for sure. Dude. That's like mm-hmm. me off like a t- tablespoon of shift right there. I'm, I'm like ripping that train around those tracks. Uh, shout out Romani and Dean Thomas. But yeah, I, lo- I loved it. And um, again, the ending again, a nice, abrupt, clean, quick ending. It Beautiful. Won't, won't spoil it, but it, it's, it's awesome. It's fucking yeah, awesome. and he's yeah. a he's a damn. De Palma is obsessed with Hitchcock. Hitchcock yeah. movies end after the the climax. The yeah. climax is done. There is no resolution because yeah. people back then weren't on Reddit saying, "Well, how would that happen?" And yeah. then 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 yeah, now yeah. directors now directors have to appease those people. So and then they ruin yeah. their art through it. So yeah, the, that that my opinion because it's like to me it's like why don't get your brain to work and that's mm-hmm. not what it is. You're, you're like not everything is meant to be this like um don't fuck with cats netflix documentary where you solve everything like no yeah. you're watching a filmmaker make this shit like that's <laughs> that's what you're doing like, like the, the, he's in charge so yeah. it's um yeah and it's interesting because two years prior he makes carrie right carrie's not his 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 uh ip right that's a stephen king novel yeah. but it's about a woman who gets angry and it's a revenge movie yeah. and she's able to do all sorts of insane uh stuff with her mind uh and a that's much more pig, horrific that's the pig's blood one right pig's blood yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so um great movie too it's 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 yeah. excellent but like the Palma was on something like there's like those couple of years because I don't know why you take those two projects back to back unless yeah. just the fact is, you know, you have a hit when you can make something for like involving, you know, young girls because he had another movie called Sisters, which is much more of an independent movie. I think it was 1971 where it was about two conjoined twin sisters and it was yeah. really creepy and weird and odd, but very, very good. Yeah, uh, that's also on Max, too, for anybody looking for that. And the but like for me. Um, but then, like you know, a couple of years later, you get scanners, right? Cronenberg scanners, kind yeah. of another PK very style scanner, movie. Yeah, yeah there's a uh-huh. lot. I mean, the end of this movie is scanners, essentially, but like yeah. honestly, a sicker ending um, because yeah. you really hate that John Cassavetti CIA agent guy. But I do think he has he's like his shit is cool, man. Like it's just it's funny. He had he goes to the school. He has the school that's like a CIA front for like finding the next like psychokinesis like yeah. alpha weapon person and because he's like well china doesn't have one uh yeah. russia has one it's like a, it's, it's definitely an arms race thing that's that's happening yeah. there and it's you like an nba like, draft you know it's like right. over, yeah it's like copycat league copycat league yeah. uh-huh. and um but yeah. so that that one is uh is 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 really cool and and you know it's a really good uh mystery but i i think it's um i think it's a lot of uh like Kirk Douglas is like in charge too the whole time too which is which is really fun cuz yeah. he's got like his uh He's got like the one like non CIA girl like basically at his uh, she she dies for him essentially <laughs> like in the yeah. his like little like CIA girlfriend yeah. um swore she would do anything for me but yeah uh, exactly uh, that's the other boy. thing well that is the funny thing about seventies movies too is like the least 
the most beta guy in the film is still more alpha than like any average guy today. Oh, it's yeah. crazy, dude. It's fucking. I know he's not jacked yeah, or like ripped or anything. That's uh, that's yeah. the other thing is a psyop from a lot of is all these guys like now it's like we need to you know I'm a reactionary. We need to look like guys from the past, dude. Like Steve yeah. McQueen looks fine, <laughs> yeah. looks fine, but he's not like cut and jacked. Like he had like just yeah. a regular eye. Like he looked good. Like he was in yeah. shape and good and toned, but he wasn't like. You know, like getting, I need to get this ab to like pop out a little more. Yeah, so, like, yeah, he yeah. didn't care about that. You know why? Because he wasn't, well, he kind of was yeah. a little gay, but like he wasn't gay, like in yeah. that sense, wasn't <laughs> vain in that sense. Yeah. But they're like, you, you laugh like Kirk, Kirk, gay, Doug- <laughs> yeah. Kirk Douglas is like 60 something in this movie. He, yeah. and Kirk Douglas died at 103. Like yeah. he was old as fuck, um, but he's like old in this movie, and he's but he's but he's cool, man. Like he's just he's just he's one yeah. step ahead of everybody. He leads like, uh, you know those guys impersonating the cops with their brand new Cadillac, like the, yeah. the whole part of that is, is is so much fun, and um, it is like a Hitchcockian uh, sci thriller essentially, and and yeah. um, highly recommend for everybody. Yeah. So, Absolutely. um, yeah, the next uh, next one, um, I have to we have to talk about because I want to talk about your uh, your red pill is uh, oh, yeah, is yeah. Uh, this I think this is think this is brand new on our site uh as it's about a day old and um you wrote your 13th red pill and it Mm -hmm. is about sleep and other altered states now what is that all about yeah i wanted to do something special for number 13 it's one of my Mm -hmm. favorite numbers you know it's a cool little slightly unstable number um you know 13 cycles of the moon around the or in every year on earth mm-hmm. you know kind of thing and it just uh so what better and i kind of wrote this over the course of a week and a half couple of weeks uh just like either super early in the morning or super late at night when i was kind of in that state and uh mm-hmm. yeah my main thesis is uh well i noticed through reading like new age books and hippie stuff and law of attraction stuff that distinct and disparate authors and belief systems and everything all focused on they're like if you could do one thing focus on your consciousness as you drift off to sleep and install the consciousness you want as you drift off to sleep that's the number one piece of advice you know whether you want to manifest a better life whether you want you know better anything in your waking life um you want to harness that precious in between state because that's when you cascade through all your brain waves, right? Where you go from beta, mm-hmm. wakeful state, beta, you know, so, so um, true. Through alpha, which is like the that's the L-theanine vibe, that's the shift, the Rishi vibe, the alpha is like zoned in, alert but couldn't give a fuck, you know, kind of vibe, mm-hmm. like just like no cares in the world, but all the care in the world, kind of you know that that kind of thing. And that's the secret is what, you, so um, I just noticed everyone talking about that and I'm getting better at implanting that I'm uh, where you're going to sleep every night. Anyway, you're always going to um, every single night at, at, you know, every night of your life, you're going to go to sleep. So you might as well harness that state for good and put it to work for you rather than go through it unconsciously. And I just find it funny with sleep is such a funny thing. You know, we think of, Think about like all our ancestors uh, trying to survive, trying to fight battles and, uh, you know, invading tribes and and just, you know, and, uh, lions that would attack us, you know, on the fucking savannah or whatever. All that time we were still all sleeping a fuck ton because we all have to sleep. Right. Mm-hmm. And then think about like Jerry Rice before every Super Bowl had to sleep. Right. It's like it's 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 crazy how like every moment in history right the craziest mm-hmm. thing shit can you imagine that person slept that night you know or like maybe not but they slept the night before you know and so it's just it's something we can't avoid basically and uh it's a special thing so yeah you you just kind of cascade through these brain waves uh you can really harness it to really expand your consciousness and then i talk about bob monroe robert monroe of the monroe institute um who we had you know we had joe Gallen- gallenberger on uh, definitely peep that episode. I think that's one of our sleeper hits for sure. Oh, yeah. No pun intended. Um, and he's a veteran of the Monroe Institute. And you know, I was sitting in this in this Red Pill article. If if you're if you're like an Art Bell guy, you'll love Bob Monroe. He's like kind of the same type of dude, right? Just yeah. a room full of fucking weird radio equipment. He was a radio guy, 
Bob Ham DeRoe's guy, a radio yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. And then uh um and then he just got he just started this thing doing brainwave entrainment to basically to get people to jump out of their body, right? To get uh get them themselves into a state where your body is completely asleep, but your mind is alert and you can leave your body at will, which is again something you can harness through sleep, you know, waking up 3 30 in the morning, going back to bed. So your body's tired, but then you can get your mind alert, things like that. So, um, yeah, I just think it's a very underrated aspect of for all this, for all this like hard work and hustle culture and all this productivity stuff and all this flow state stuff we see now. And that's also something I mentioned is how surface level all based and, you know, like cool podcaster health stuff focuses on just like the most surface level, which is to be expected. You know, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Everything in this life is surface level, but there's just so much richness beneath that. Um, yeah, it's curious. What, what do you think about that? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I hate sleep. I wish I could bypass it. You, you can't. Yeah. Um, I yeah. do feel better. Uh, I, again, I don't like sleeping because I feel like you lost to the day. I feel like you could, you know, uh, I have an issue with time. I have an issue with saying i don't have time for something that i yeah. want to do and i the problem is is when you stay up late a lot of times i'm not productive when i stay up late i'm not yeah. like i i stay up all night worrying you know what i mean oh, and it's okay. like that's beta not worrying but you know just like yeah. it's not it, i mean every time anytime i sit uh anytime i'm like well i'm gonna you know be up till this time in the morning you know on a weekend or something maybe up till this time in the morning i'm and i'm gonna work on this i'm gonna read this i'm gonna do that none of that stuff ever gets done and I think it's the idea is that no, my body clocked out, you know, yeah. and your mind never does. Yeah. So, so when you are, I feel like that's a better way to, in my opinion, I should be going to bed earlier and allowing that angst to work its way through dreams. Um, because I, I actually like having the feeling like not like it, but I think it's important. And I think it's, uh, uh, obviously not too much of it but i think it's i think it's important but for me to just be doing it during my waking hours um w rather than just getting a jump start on tomorrow I, I need to teach myself to be better at it and i think the, uh, applying you know like you mentioned like the the, the tongue thing where you press your tongue yeah. to the top of the mouth like mm -hmm. doing all that stuff and i i think that's uh it's a good way to to at least try because again like you will never not sleep like you can do meth you can do all yeah. types of stuff you eventually will crash and you're gonna have to sleep so you might as well first off like if you can master every single part of your waking day or not waking day but just breathing day yeah because you are breathing when you sleep uh if you can yeah. master that i think that you know you don't then you don't just like have eight hours of just like sluggish sleeping or you know six hours of sluggish sleeping because I, yeah. Lord knows I, I like I need to wake up more refreshed, you know, well, what you everything you just said about I completely agree with where you going to sleep, you feel like it's time wasted. There's not enough time in the day to do everything you want, especially when, you know, you and I were trying to do this and we have jobs, jobs which yeah. is like it's to, yeah, it's it, it and that won't be that way forever. You know, we're, we're going to get mm -hmm. off that for sure. But um, but even though even if we did podcasting full time, you know, we would want to do other shit you know, at the same time. There's always stuff yeah. to do. You're never fucking, doing everything yeah. you want to do. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a, yeah. But so mm -hmm. I think the things I mentioned in this article is the antidote for what you said, because if you, Hey, if you can dream more and then start to lose a dream, well, Hey, if you, if, if, or if you could learn to lose a dream and I'm not there where I'm like doing it all the time, I definitely do it intermittently sporadically. I think you can absolutely train up to lucid dreaming every night and even having multiple lucid dreams once you do that you could do anything you could do you, you know you, you could literally like practice guitar in your dreams or you could you, you know just so it's it's this whole open field of consciousness that you kind of digest you bring consciousness and awareness to what your subconscious is already digesting through the day and then uh yeah you i will i i have noticed since I've started to implement this stuff and I'm not even fully where I want to be yet with implementing it, uh, I find a, a lot less stressed of like, gotta get everything done. Gotta, you know, make this count, that count. Cause it's kind of, it's cut things are processed and things come as they are, you know, kind of. And, uh, I just find that interesting where it's, uh, it's, it's, what it teaches you is like, okay, I guess like a metaphor I find, or not a metaphor, but like a little saying is we need to treat 
waking life more like a dream and we need to treat our dream lives more like more like reality yeah right agree we need to kind of bridge and blend those kind of things and in doing so our lives will improve and we will experience a lot more synchronicity both in waking and sleep states and we'll uh we will grow probably a lot faster than we could just trying to just trying to uh you know go through the day and do do all this stuff you know i don't know so yeah, that's what I've noticed for sure. And uh, yeah, because you hit, yeah, then like just the, the simple element of like, you know, I'm sorry, like you can, as I get older, it's tougher for me to like just work off of like six hours of sleep. I used to be able to do it no problem. Yeah. Six, five hours of sleep, three hours of sleep. I, I used to do it. I mean, it would we'd laugh about it. It was like a badge of honor almost. Yeah. Um, but now it's just like just delaying that inevitable only possibly because the fact is like sleep's just not that interesting to me. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and perhaps yeah. it can be now. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll apply it. I'll apply it. I will. I will do uh, trial runs of of these things. And I've noticed, yeah. like, I've become more of a dreamer now that I, when especially when I'm on, like, when I take Lion's Mane, like that stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Crystal, crystal clear, like, yeah. kind of almost like almost like shockingly clear and scary dreams. But they're yeah. they're good. I mean, like, yeah. like they're it's good that it has them. And and I've noticed that perhaps in my day to day life, I I kind of just push that anxiety and angst into sleep mode which sounds weird to some people it sounds like freddy krueger-ish and scary but uh -huh. no it's like i'd much rather have that happen during my sleeping hours where it's almost cool like we talked about that with yeah. jack last time we're like it's kind of cool when you wake up from a bad dream you're like this is, yeah. this is tight like you know yeah. like, just like that was cool that that was just a dream totally. but then you have yeah. the ability to actually like fuck up your actual material life by carrying that energy into your actual waking hours yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was cool. Energy is the best thing to do for bad dreams. I feel, yeah, and uh, yeah, and yeah. I know the lion's mane definitely scientifically extends REM throughout the night, which is the dream state. Feels and, like, um, it. and again, it's super easy to set. And I talked about a little bit about supplements and herbs and stuff you can do. And it, it's super easy to set an alarm. This is something I'm taking more serious. You know, usually I'll naturally wake up or get waken up by my cats at. 5 a.m. And then maybe once a week I'll sleep into like 7, 7 30 or so. Mm -hmm. Um and but you set set alarm for 3 30, right by your bed, have the glass of water and then your you know, your little supplements or herbs or capsules or whatever. Take them, go back to bed, do some deep breathing, and intend to have a dream or a lucid dream, and you will, you know, and um yeah, there's some stuff you could have like movie ass dreams like fucking like hour and a half long like you know it's like vivid colors just the craziest shit you've ever seen there's really no limit to it and um yeah and it's, it's just fun you know it's uh it's good stuff and and yeah the robert monroe stuff is just so i mean that guy was the the guy for his moment in time right when headphone technology was coming online and, you know, just beat generators and all this different stuff. Um, it's crazy. He just like, it, it's, that's shit's a gift for sure. And, uh, that, that's a, that's a really fun thing to get into. And like, yo, you and I have both done liquid luck as have some of our discord members and mm -hmm. listeners and fans and, and friends and stuff. And it's like, we've all had, uh synchronicities and positive experiences with that absolutely and that's just from listening to a goddamn 30 minute track in your headphones you know maybe once a week or a couple times a month and things happen it's crazy it's like this reality is so fluid you know it's 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 a trip it's a goddamn trip yeah yeah and uh well that's the guys go to rarecandy.substack.com that one's free you don't have to sign up mm -hmm. for anything you should yeah. though um yeah. you should now um got two voicemails i just want to do one thing um we're kind of on a streak i like bringing up uh, an alpha male that you might not know um we've been talking about this guy for a lot but i feel like it's been a while and i don't think he's gotten his proper 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 due on here look now if you're not you remember the thomas kincaid one that was on a free feed now on our Substack paid feed we did rick okasic that was amazing <laughs> um still think i still think about that one uh, yeah. uh talking about his uh escapades and yeah. uh uh, he, he thwarted the bureaucracy. Let's just say that much. <laughs> and um, now I'm here to talk to you about Dave Dahl. Who's Dave Dahl, right? Who the hell's that? No one. No, Dave Dahl. Yeah, D A H L. You might know him as Dave's Killer Bread. <laughs> um, 
we yeah. talk about him. We bring him up. But I, I want to. I, I, I'm going through his Wikipedia page because honestly, it's better <laughs> than any article about him. His Wikipedia. I've looked at the articles. Yeah. Everyone does this like weird prison reform thing about him. Yeah, like yeah. this like epic. Like he's like gives jobs to like convicts and stuff. Like okay, that's cool. Yeah. Not interesting though. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Dave Dahl. So he uh, just recently celebrated his 61st birthday uh, a week ago. Um, he's been around a while. Dave Dahl from Portland, Oregon. He uh, he he's he was incarcerated like a lot of his life. Like he yeah. was burglarizing people's houses in like the 80s. He um, doing a bunch of drugs. Yeah. And like in and out of prison all around the country, Massachusetts, Oregon, just um, constantly in and out of rehab. And he got a job with brother named Glenn two ends but that's okay um and yeah it was his brother his brother uh he joined his it's the family bay they had like a little family bakery yeah now he finally is like i look i'm i'm getting my shit together like i'm getting my shit together i'm gonna i'm gonna we're gonna make the we're gonna make this thing pop off like I, this is all i got i can't do anything else in life like i've i've screwed up most of my life yeah um so while working at the bakery doll came up with a cornmeal crusted loaf which he and his brother named dave's killer bread and formed the basis of the new brand after after initial success at local farmers market stores began carrying the products brands i remember when dave's was first getting rolled out like i remember when it was like right. first yeah. it was like it was crazy you're like what is it it was the logo you're like this is crazy he's playing like yeah, guitar, on the guitar. Front. yeah kind of yeah weird kind of like animated guy like kind of my, like my mom would get his shit from the farmer's market out out east in eastern oregon so she yeah. i think she even probably met him because he was probably rocking those stands in the early days yeah yeah i mean yeah it was crazy but like his bread is good too i i, I do enjoy it it's Last. different it's it's different i like the i think it's like the nine seed or something i that that one's my that's my go-to um sure. i know it's some good. of our i like white seed. white bread done right dude it's banging. i don't like the white bread because the white bread has shit in it that i'm like well it's not i don't know yeah <laughs> it's like well it's not really like i was just i don't know it doesn't seem yeah. like that good i i like the like i like his like super like fucking you know nature walk bread like that oh, he yeah. makes like the the kind of like <laughs> yeah just like going like science camp ass like yeah. bread that he that he makes that stuff's really good um so that cornmeal crusted bread you know and can you imagine dude can you imagine like so in 2013 right 2013 the brand is taking off it's it's getting big um but doll has another problem so it, he, he's back to the old him uh, yeah. uh D- dave D- he, the the killer came out in Dave. Yeah. he didn't kill it i don't i don't know if he killed anybody but uh yeah. so in november 2013 a female friend of doll called the called the police to report that he was having a mental health crisis uh crisis which that's they they do that all the time yeah, it's, <laughs> triggered by gluten dude like yeah. he just literally can't eat bread without doing crime <laughs> yeah <laughs> true <laughs> yeah yeah no i i think there's something here i don't think they're mutually yeah. exclusive it's like a schizophrenic uh, trigger dude. <laughs> yeah yeah he's like i finally found a bread that i can eat ethically and yeah. not kill anybody um Upon officer's arrival, Dahl fled the scene in a black Cadillac Escalade pimp. Pimp? And, and, <laughs> uh, on, and proceeded, yeah. he's like, like fucking G unit ass dude. Like, uh, <laughs> but, and proceeded to immediately ram two police cars head on. That's fucking Dahl then, no, dude. Fought, Dahl then fought the officers as they arrested him. Yeah. And sending three officers to the hospital was like, hey, you know, you should see the other guy. Yeah. Uh, in October 2014, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which I, hey, perhaps. But yeah. Dahl was found guilty except for insanity on two counts of third degree assault. Um, now, look, like this is not a way to be living. However, I do love to drop a scenario in my head where, you know, the cops were <laughs> cops were, you know, having an issue with with old Dave uh, throwing him down the escalades like on fire and stuff yeah. in the background and they're getting him out of the car black and bruised but then there's one officer who has like he's eating a sandwich and he's like no le- let him go yeah let him go <laughs> no, no. Yeah. you know like sorry sir sorry yeah, yeah. it's his bread it's killer yeah, yeah. it's like it's, uh, it's like it's like randy marsh scenario yeah like, he's just got, like mustard all over his mouth and, like eat bread dripping everywhere i mean they're like they're like officer jenkins do you understand this guy like has, has wounded our brothers he goes but he saved many 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a net positive. <laughs> From the bread to the many. feds, dude. Yeah. Because, like, dude, I will say, yeah. he sold the company. He sold like, the company. Yeah, for like 50 mil, like, right? Uh, like, it's like... No, 275. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> 275. Dude, let that Damn. man free Dave, dude. Free I know. Dave. Yeah. First off, I, I like... He sold it. First of all, I fuck with anyone who sells a company for like eight yeah. years, dude. Like, I don't care if they're the biggest loser in the world, dude. It's like that's so fucking. Tight. But no, here's the thing: yeah. he got that number after 2013 when he got arrested. <laughs> this is 2015. Tight. Like, it was probably yeah. a negotiating tactic from the other side to be like, "Bro, didn't you like fucking go <laughs> buck? Like, like you know, didn't you just go like insane like a couple years ago?" And he's like, "Fine, 275." Fuck. <laughs> He's like, it's he's like, like succession, dude. It's like, yeah, we got to take it down a few, a few percentage yeah. points. He's like, he's Eat like, I'll lower, I'll lower, it, I'll lower it down from two billion <laughs> yeah. to two seventy five mil. Fine, <laughs> you know, and it's a deal. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but then like the guy's like, okay, well, what about a hundred? And then Dave starts like pounding his fist, like motherfucker, you know, I'm <laughs> yeah, crazy. Exactly. Like, give me the yeah. two seventy five. You want the bread? You want, you want to sell the two fucking sleeve pack in Costco or not? Two seventy five. Two seventy five. But it, yeah, it happens afterwards. And, yeah. you know, I look to me, it's an alpha male because look, bread, his bread, no <laughs> bread is perfect from the store. No bread yeah. is perfect, right? It's no bread is perfect. There's not, it's organic, but you know, it's got things in there, but like non-organic bread is like death. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it straight up, it will make you yeah. feel that way. That's why when people think they're allergic to uh, this bread, that bread or anything, it's like, no, th- our bread's terrible. Yeah. Like, like people all over the world eat other kinds of bread and it's like, and they lived to like 88 years old. Yeah, yeah exactly. Rice, all these things. Yeah. They don't coat their rice in plastic like we do. And yeah, um, like mm-hmm. the, the so for me to for someone to make even like a 80% good bread, make a bunch of money and be just crazy as fuck. Yeah. Like being the Thomas Kincaid of bread is sick. I hope he hooked his family up. Like, you know, like where yeah, it's just like they're like, dude, you've we fucking bailed you out like 14 times, dude. Like, just yeah. give us two mil each, please, dude. He's like, nope. <laughs> That'd be just so right. Dri- just drives the escalate through the house. Yeah. And just, like the Kool-Aid man. Like, no. He's got a fleet. By the way, Dave. shout out Portland, dude. Think about it. Portland. We got Dave's Killer Bread. You we can you can go out here and go and get like the the you know, they're like the factory bread. You can get that here, like right down the road. Mm-hmm. And it's right across the street from mother. What? Oh, I don't know. Little Bob's Red Mill, you know, like it's a nationwide store right here in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's some there's some heaters in Oregon for sure. Dude. Some good, wholesome, whole grain fun to be had. Yeah. It's kind of like going to Ireland and drinking a Guinness or something. Yeah. If you go to Portland yeah. and drink a, and drink that. But yeah, it's uh. so. Yeah, he's I mean, I don't know what he's up to now. Um, trying to find it. It seems like he's kind of kind of just fell back but he's got a uh 2920 square foot penthouse condo in downtown portland yeah which is pretty downtown crazy. yeah i know yeah. it's like not what i would do with the money no. but uh, yeah. yeah i would i would straight up go into the woods and just fucking like i don't know i, I you got yeah. a lot of money but um he's gonna and then he's got a uh and he's also got a 33 acre he's got 33 acres on the how do you say clackamas Clackamas, Clackamas River. yeah. Clackamas uh-huh. River is 33 acres over there, and he's going to yeah. grow all his own food out there and then yeah. try to live. He Let's said, go. so he's retired. Um, yeah. he got he got married, so she it didn't scare her. First off, you tell a girl like the woman he met her in 2020, which is kind of funny because like she's like, oh, so like you know, he probably if you look at him, he doesn't look like a rich man. So if he's just yeah. like swiped right. Or something. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and you guys are at a dinner, and he's like taking you somewhere nice, and he's just, it's just like he's like get whatever you want, huh? I was like come on, yeah, get the bottle, get the bottle of wine. I don't care. Like yeah, uh, yeah you do yeah. all all that stuff, and she's like, no, who is this guy? And then he's yeah. like, look, I, you know, after like after date five, and he's just like, yeah, look, I got to I got to tell you something. Yeah, I'm like, Dave. I'm, I'm Dave. I'm da- yeah, I'm Dave. You, buy, she's you like, bought my. She's like, I'm Dave, and she's like, who? He's like, I'm, I'm yeah. Dave. She goes, I know you're Dave. She's like, no, I'm Dave's killer bread. He's been, he's been to her house and she has the bread in like the bread basket. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, that's, that's me. No, that's no. The, the thing is, is she probably has like Sarah Lee 
And he's oh, like, you fucking yeah. cunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's fucking, yeah. Speaking of a horrible bread, dude. Fuck yeah. Sierra Leone, yeah. yeah. Country. What's the country? Bread. Country. Country time tastes good, but it is it's like yeah. the country time. He's just got that. And he's just like, all of a sudden she wakes up and there's just like pieces of bread and like pigeons inside the house and stuff. And he's like, this is what you feed it. I wouldn't even feed this to my birds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then she's like, who is he? He goes, I'm, I'm the killer bread. Okay. That's, yeah. that's, and then, you know, the criminal history probably wouldn't scare her because, like, women love when you still make money after doing that. Are you kidding me? That's like a benefit, yeah. dude. That's like a yeah, yeah. That's like a easy mode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, damn, now. you're yeah. tough, rugged, and rich. Like, wow, yeah. <laughs> crazy. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, big, big, big fan. I mean, we've we've been talking about him for a while, but I felt like it was good to give him his proper uh, in this new kind of series that we're doing. So, if you guys, if you guys have anybody. Send, send me some if you if you're just like hey go through this guys you, you'll never believe it because i love finding guys who make stuff we've all seen but you don't know anything yeah. about um yeah. uh so that's that's uh that's great so two voicemails before we go we're going a little long today but um that's totally fine one of which is a really cool uh uh kind of it's something that i had heard of but i i did a little more research on today um it's from kurt kurt you know kurt from gain of fiction um for the dostoevsky episodes uh but he asked it there the other one is a guy talking about the miami alien and how we might have gotten it wrong so uh all right here's kurt's voicemail hey guys it's kurt again sorry for hogging the hotline i'm just asking if you guys were familiar with the simon ehrlich wager uh pretty pretty crytonian pilled uh wager betting um on the price of specific uh i think it was like um gas uh, different useful um sources of uh energy and different um i guess just manufacturing uh elements that um they, they wagered on the, the cost after a certain amount of time and uh obviously the libtard lost um just wanted to know what you guys thought about that also similar to Kirsch and his wagers. You don't see many uh, public intellectual wagers like that on their beliefs. Uh, Brian Kaplan is another one that does that. He's a libertarian. Um, I think he won all of his besides the bet that um, Britain would not Brexit, but they did. Thank God. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. So are you familiar with this? Because I, I looked it up today. A, a little bit. I mean, it's like, by the way, yeah, I love that libertarian bros love doing like Rich libertarian bros love doing massive public wagers, dude. Which I, I'm, it, don't be us. If if we if we get the Dave's color red money, we're doing five million dollar bets with like dumbass COVID people all day. No, all just day anybody, long. just yeah. people who think, yeah, just anything, yeah. like yeah, about anything. So yeah. Simon, I, I it's it's interesting to me. I have a lot of uh, thoughts about this, but the Simon Ehrlich wager is I actually had heard about it. Kurt brought it up through Michael Crichton, but. It's not in State of Fear. However, on his book tour, when he was doing all those big speeches and everything, he did bring this up because uh, I think it's Paul Ehrlich was the is the one. That, yeah. So Ehrlich wrote in 1968, he wrote a book called The Population Bomb. Yeah. Which was like this big, like, we're running out of resources. Oh, like, we're all going <laughs> to yeah. die. Stanford guy, by the way. Stanford yeah. guy who was really yeah. into Malthus. So sick um really into like depop stuff like so he uh the population bomb and Crichton uses him in a way basically state of fear like he said that that britain wouldn't exist by the year 2000 all these big like claims and stuff and then of course like people always hedge and they go well britain as we know it doesn't you know like they they love doing like stupid shit like that like like you know (laughs) i hate when people do that it's like nah bro you said it was gonna die yeah you said jake gyllenhaal day after tomorrow shit like you said that was what was gonna happen it's like well i just with the crime rate (laughs) yeah you know and uh, they they uh so so his idea they so um julian simon uh, is is a guy who he was a like a Maryland professor, Cato yeah. Institute, one of Kurt's guys. Let's just say that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, libertarian guy. Definitely on. I'm on his side for this one too. Uh, he basically read the Population Bomb, which was like a huge book. It was kind of like a shock and awe book. Like, oh, yeah. can you believe this this thinking and stuff? And he was just like, dude, like this is gay. Like this is not. <laughs> this is not real. Yeah. And he wrote like a scathing kind of like very academic, like challenge you to a duel, like yeah. op-ed <laughs> and yeah. was just like, was just like, this is wrong. And I'm blah, blah, blah. And then 
Er Ehrlich was like, well, what's up, bro? Like, what do you want to do about that? Yeah. And uh, Furlick, so, <laughs> yeah. So, so Simon and Ehrlich, they basically said like, okay, we're going to pick five medals that would, they think are going to, the way to, the way to track this, right. To see if there's enough natural resources in the world uh, for, as population grows, they want to say, well, let's bet on the price. So from uh, 1980 to 1990, we're going to say we're going to bet on this price two hundred dollars each, which put some real money on it. Come on. Yeah, you guys are on. fucking. Yeah, that, that's this part. I don't like where I'm yeah. like, you got add zeros to that, bro. Like, come on, yeah. let's get real. Make it theatrical. Yeah. And first, uh, first about, dude. yeah, like, yeah exactly. It, exactly. Yeah. Um, Seven so pig. yeah. So they wanted to see the the price of of that. So now, of course, or, you know, El Ehrlich, Erl I can't Erlich. say his name. Erlich, right. Yeah. 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 If if he his idea was that like no this should like become super super inflation like affected and should be like super high uh, because of population and everything. Now yeah. Simon is like I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. So whatever. Nah. So between 1980 and 1990, the world's population grew by more than 800 million, the largest increase in one decade in all of history. But by September 1990, the price of each of Ehrlich's selected metals had fallen. <laughs> chromium which had sold for three three ninety a pound three dollars and ninety cents a pound yeah. in 1980 was down to three three seventy yeah. um and the, tin was down um was almost tin. in half was that everyone always half. forgets about tin dude yeah, yeah. they do yeah yeah it's vanity yeah. dude i remember when yeah. tin happened yeah um <laughs> but the uh, the, yeah chrom yeah i think it was chromium copper nickel tin and tungsten yeah. um so yeah, basically uh as a result, in 1990, Paul Ehrlich mailed Julian Simon a check for $576 to settle the wager. It's just like, oh, come on, dude. Okay. Like, yeah. So basically, yeah. like, you know, it was just, it was ridiculous. But um, it's funny when you watch, like, uh, you, I went on YouTube to see, like, some normie YouTube videos about it. They're basically saying that, like, even though Julian Simon was correct, yeah. um, we do still uh, need to change the way that we, uh, make these oh things God. accessible to people and they showed it was like this kind of like new yorker style cartoon animation thing happening yeah. uh first off he was reading uh that when they were talking about julian simon first reading the population bomb he was picking up that and a copy of andromeda strain as well which i thought was Whoa. very great synchronicity yeah but they come out the same year 68 so but it was just uh it was just funny that part was 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 weird but like there was they showed like for julian simon they were showing his brain talking about how we'll always find a way basically as humans like yeah. we'll always find a way to like keep society going very optimistic look about it but yeah. it shows a 3d a 3d printer making a steak like yeah. as the graphic and he's like yeah. i'm like is that what he said yeah <laughs> was, was that was that his take or is this the fucking gate yeah. it was on the x channel so you know yeah do that what you will uh so yeah i thought that was interesting so uh yeah i my yeah. thoughts on that are that uh if you're confident on anything uh put some money on it dude first well, off it's a, and do it now you should do it now yeah the problem is now is whose information are we going on now because yeah. people can say like google google everything i like is on page nine of google exactly you know what i mean like yeah. the stuff that i'm going off of and people will go well that's on page nine of google and it's like yeah because google sucks that's yeah. why and DuckDuckGo just got exposed. So yeah. it doesn't even matter. Like, what I mean is, like, it's tough now to even prove that you're correct on certain things because the internet has the Crichton thing of the internet has happened where it has created just a one mono thought like of 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 everything rather than the mckenna optimism of yeah. everything the marketplace of ideas you know poor tenants yeah. but the, the that yeah. part and then also what would be sick is we have FanDuel now i should be able to bet on that yeah Totally. Like I know, I know. Like you could like trade stocks. I understand that, but I just want to like be like, what's the, yeah? What's the line? Know, yeah. Over under. Line? Over under three seventy. Mm -hmm. uh, tungsten. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. And I would. And me, if I was a couple IPAs deep and an edible, I'd be like, tungsten. What college is that? Is yeah. this basketball? <laughs> yeah. Tungsten Tech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah are they in the yeah. meineke car bowl this year i'm yeah. betting on <laughs> but, yeah uh, i'm noticing uh, a trend of a certain class of people usually academically minded usually fear-based who are very comfortable in being wrong over and over again with zero consequences or skin in the game 
yeah. uh, in their predictions. You know, it's just like, like a, some $576. Dude. I know, and, he, dude, and he probably, yeah. and he was never punished for it. Yeah. For, for shocking the world into fear. So that's why Kirsch is such a, that dude has a wing at MIT because he gave them so much money and mm-hmm. they, they still, they don't fuck with him, dude. It's crazy. It's because like, yeah. somebody just Googles did a bunch of people die of the jab. And yeah. then it says no on the first page of Google where it's like <laughs> no, Bob's burger guy going no with a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> literally like that's like, and then and everyone's like, oh, well, then Kirsch is wrong. So that's yeah. my issue with like ha- even having an honest debate now is it sucks because people just go Google and then Google has the, I mean, we saw what Google did for the 2020 election and all these other things like Google is fake. Google is fake as fuck. Go off vibes. Yeah. So um, anyways, uh, last one, longer voicemail, but I, I love the, this is a Miami native. I've, I know oh, this yeah. guy. He's a big sports guy. He's pissed off about the university of Miami. They're doing a lot of like rebranding and weird stuff right now. I think he's pissed off which I love because it's like, I love when people just get really focused on like one thing and they shout it into the Twitter world. And they're like, he's like, am I the only person that's mad about the, like, I love, I, cause I feel that way a lot. So this is from the caffeine fascist. Uh, great, great name. Um, so he has some, he, I don't think he, he's uh, not challenging us on the Miami thing. I think he's like, nah, bro, I'm from Miami. Let me tell you. So here we go. So guys, this is uh caffeine fascist on Twitter. Um, so I just finished listening to the episode about the aliens in Miami. Uh, someone who grew up here, been here all my life for the most part. Um, people have to understand that, like, it's going to sound a little funny, but a lot of people lie here. And a lot (laughs) of people will do anything and everything and anything under the sun to become famous, including the police. Like, you make one call and it sounds like something they can become a hero in, they'll show up 10 deep. It's the weirdest thing. And that's what I'm assuming happened. Uh, another thing, too, is I don't believe anyone here. This is like <laughs> damn capital of the world. And most of the people that I meet, I definitely don't believe a word out of their mouth. <laughs> So when the alien thing comes up and, like, the Cubans start acting crazy, I already know it's either an attempt to become viral or to make up this story that they end up on the news. Like, that's what they people love down here is, like, me, 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 put me on TV, let me, I don't know, get a couple checks off of YouTube. It's wild. But that's the way the city is. And it's gotten a lot worse. Um, the police are like that, too. You know, they have the gelled up hair and you see him out um cashing in on overtime it's just how it is here um they want to be movie stars and famous and all that so um yeah don't really buy into that miami has a really strong police presence for that very reason so uh definitely not aliens i do believe they're demonic entities to some degree um but yeah that's it thanks guys love the show more like Liami. yeah damn shout just, out yeah it just seem i, I've, I I've like that been, I, like I like it a lot that was hilarious i uh it does seem miami does seem to be a very like a uh, yeah. stereotypical place like it matches what people talk about you literally go yeah. down there to get a fake ass yeah yeah. So if you if you're gonna go down there to get a fake ass, you might tell a fake story while you're down mm-hmm. there. And but because yeah. that was that was my biggest thing was why are so many cops showing up? But he's like, no, that's just Miami. Yeah. Which again, <laughs> gelled, I, gelled up hair, dude. Yeah, <laughs> all that. the other cops with yeah. their gelled up hair. Going, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's and uh, the just picturing this like five foot eight loser Miami cop that wants to be famous. <laughs> so he just does like yeah. a fake alien call. I, I can see it. I can see Is that it. how XXX Tentacion died? Yes, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because it was yeah. just people respond. I know you get shot by police, but did people just be like, that's an entity? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. So I, I was just oh wondering. God. But yeah, that that was I love that. I love the local people. It's like, bro, like I get what you guys are saying, but like I'm from here and motherfuckers lie all the time. Mm-hmm. like it is it is interesting like i no, i first off i think cities in cities people just lie yeah 
in country like there's a in like not to like glamorize you know rural areas over like city stuff it, you know just yeah performatively but like in cities like people are transplants and stuff and like yeah you know some people are from there or some people are from like outside the city and they just like make up their own like token yeah. lore totally about like something that happened and you can tell you can mm -hmm. tell when they're lying and it's like you want to call them out but you're just like no because that's that's like a whole nother thing that i have to deal with yeah. now is his is that he's so used to like lying that he already has his like no i'm serious fake yeah. other fake story um and and i just think people just are really comfortable with lying right now which yeah. is kind of crazy in like the age of information but at the end of the day yeah. like you meet so many people and they tell you so many like stories to try to like get your interest or for you to click on something and then you're just like no they're they're just lying and that's my yeah. problem that's my problem with that miami thing was every video i saw other than the one that we played uh where it was just the dude like hey this is what i saw i'm not really trying to get anything off it but this is what i saw other than that everybody else was doing the weatherman pointing video yeah the weatherman pointing tiktok video like yeah so true yeah. like you know and i that when it's framed that way yeah. i'm like that is an app that is meant for you to lie to me on i feel yeah. like and um so that no that's i think that's i think that's good that's what this hotline is for guys 510-256-9850 i mean it's for anything but if it, if there was mm -hmm. a point that like either a we missed something on or uh definitely don't like correct my fucking grammar or something I, somebody did that the other day did you know it's yeah. actually mccallan not mccallan <laughs> i was like oh, all right yeah yeah we're not playing that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was like, yeah. I, I let that one slide, but I was like, no, that one's going on the show because you decided to be phonetic police over <laughs> here. But he did the caps, yeah. like actually, you know, oh, Guardian Leviosa, like yeah, yeah. Steph did all that, like yeah, Granger like, over here. Yeah, shout out. I was like, shout out though. That's the boy. I just, I, yeah. I was like, I was like, you, I'm, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to say something about that yeah. uh, on my, <laughs> on my platform, uh, but. <laughs> Yeah. yeah the scotch that i can't afford i pronounced wrong apparently mm -hmm. yeah. um but, <laughs> the, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. um yeah so on that note guys um that's it for us went a little long today but hey what the hell it's uh it's an off day for me um, oh yeah and is this a is this a sub sub stack one i don't or, think so i don't think so we, dude, we, said rip, some, we said some bad pharmaceutical words because so yeah. hopefully that one goes okay. but um yeah. yeah they can't be censoring disease x yet right yeah, it's literally the name. Are. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah disease X. Little little disease letter. X. Little <laughs> disease. <laughs> little disease X. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's. I think that's. Uh, I think that's oh gonna. That, that's what that. That's what that reminds me of. It's like that you can't. Because I remember when the, the the coronavirus was a thing, and like all the Mexicans at work made really funny jokes when it was called coronavirus. <laughs> I, I tore I tore the house down with a joke the other day at work. Like I it was one of those ones <laughs> where I'm like I told it as like a I was expecting a couple chuckles, but then like somebody would had like, had like tears in their eyes. Yeah, like, damn, it wasn't that <laughs> so <it> wasn't. funny. <laughs> so so I was in the, I was in the office and somebody called in and like my boss was like it was like a Monday after uh, some game or something I can't remember it was like something that this guy's a fan of it wasn't Niners but it was somebody else like this guy's a fan of and we like knew his ass was gonna be partying the night before yeah so he yeah. calls in he's like I'm sick he goes I don't, I don't think it's COVID or anything and my boss is like yeah, all right whatever I'll get you replaced and I was like yeah I was like I was like yeah he he's got the Modelo virus <laughs> it's like not that funny I mean it's yeah. just like like you know Modelo virus. Dude, my boss, yeah. the other boss, he laughed like uh, Lebowski, the the Knox Harrington guy, yeah. like oh! <laughs> like that, like he laughed like that, and yeah. he was like Modelo virus, that's fucking good, bro. Like he was yeah. like, because this guy was Mexican, the 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 guy yeah. that called in, so <laughs> like, which is yeah, it's good, it's funny, yeah, yeah it's corona. clever, yeah. it's clever, mm -hmm. yeah, because it's funny because it was called the coronavirus, yeah, and then like, it's like, is this because he's a Niners fan and they they played that game? Yeah, it right. was something. Yeah, it was like it was something. Like Christian McCovid or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, just a, just a way of yeah. like, uh, it was just a, a, it tore it down though in the office, and I was like kind of uncomfortable yeah. with the way that they laughed at it. I was like, I was uh -huh. like, I was, I wasn't, I was like, I have better material. Yeah, like don't yeah. you know? I don't know. So uh, any, anyways, awesome. um, that note, guys. 
Everybody have a safe week. We'll be back. Um, also, leave voicemails. We're going to be talking to Romani Dean Thomas soon. So leave voicemails for him, too, if you want. We'll play them on there. Otherwise, just email Rare Candy Industries. If, you don't, if you're not a phone person, if, you're not, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You could just email it to rarecandyindustries at gmail.com. But if you got uh, questions for him, um, we're, I, want him to, I want him to talk about anything and everything. So uh, yeah. just, just anything that you think like a herbalist like kind of – you know, woo woo stuff like uh, hit, hit us with that. Cause I want to, I want to ask him a few questions um, yeah. coming up on gain of fiction. We're, we're putting a we pin need, in, in. So we need, well, sorry, we, maybe I shouldn't say this on the free feed publicly, but we need the over under on Romania Dean Thomas. Can he log in this time or not? In, in what yeah. amount of time, you know, in those stream yard. zero chance he will ever listen. Will we to have to, will I have show. to FaceTime him to guide him through the process for a third or fourth time in a row? Of what if he got on, what if, what if he was on the free trial and like had the reminder for 13 uh, days yeah. later to like, listen to, no, he has no chance he's listening to that. And, um, but yes, that is correct. That is going to yeah. be an issue. Um, <laughs> that's going to be something that we work through. That's just, uh, um, but yeah, we're, uh, yeah. if you're following along with gain of fiction, a couple of you, actually are reading at the same pace which is kind of crazy um but uh emma we're going to get to emma scheduling conflict we're going to get to that but it's not next um as though i said it was lord of the rings fellowship of the ring that's happening um that's going to be awesome i am watching the ralph bakshi cartoon um which is sick the 78 1978 cartoon is sick um it combines the first two volumes uh the two towers and the um uh fellowship of the ring and uh but uh, but the uh, ralph bakshi was like a based ass cartoonist he made like felix the cat like a lot of like oh, fucked yeah. up ass like cartoons or not felix the cat franz the cat that's what i say it's like oh, kind of like God. a like a epic like uh um like kind of fucked up thing so then he made like a lord of the rings and it's kind of kind of twisted and scary like it's Word. very very good um so we're gonna talk about that and then of course the peter jackson movie um we're gonna yep. be talking about that the classic but um then uh blood meridian i just cracked that open first time i'm like probably the last person to uh the last white male uh that hasn't read uh blood meridian um definitely gonna be doing that uh checking that out i know i'm gonna love it so that's that that's coming up um then we're doing uh sci-fi mode we're going solaris um plus the tarkovsky film of the same name and um dalgren samuel delaney season um yeah. definitely gonna get into that debate you know talk a little poly age consent with the yeah samuel delaney. Of, yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. S -S sd dude yeah. yeah shout out to sd um so it's yeah like, it's like our jimmy page take it's like do you want good sci-fi or not because this is yeah. the price of admission no, if i come, <laughs> like, to, you, if I come yeah. to you and say like hey bro <laughs> yeah i got oh we'll get you like seven classic albums seven novels something that you'll listen to and reread go back to all the time like oh, whoever for whoever it is polanski any of this stuff but like two kids are gonna hate their life like what do you say <laughs> are gonna hate their life did you say <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, they're gonna have a bad time yeah. you know like they're gonna have a bad time like two three kids you know it's, it's yeah. gonna, like like the guy the boy's gonna get it's, active you know like like if it, if it does it, like what like would you at, like yeah. i understand publicly you'd be like oh no I, yeah no no i don't want that but then like but then like in private you just you do the bilbo with the ring like after all why shouldn't yeah. i have eight classic polanski movies and uh 10 yeah. years of amazing no miss zeppelin albums and yeah. um samuel delaney which i don't even know if samuel delaney did any of that stuff i have to look him up i don't yeah. i don't know if he did anything or if he just was if that was like his like fantasy stuff i mean it's, bro yeah. it's sci-fi fantasy yeah he was just a card carrying member. It was, it yeah. was his thing, you know. If I'm yeah, doing writing like, in the genre of fantasy, and you tell me what I can't do, I'm like, it's fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love what it's up to me what the yeah. fantasy is, not you. Kelby, that's the Kelby take. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. no, he, like, and he's a thousand percent correct. Uh -huh. Which is like, all right, like, I, like, yeah. Oh no, you can't do that. It's against the rules of fantasy. It's like, oh, that's what cool. another rules. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I thought we were always oh, literary fiction. Sorry, no, we're, I do fantasy. Yeah. Um, and I know, guys.